Hi, you're a blessing having chance upon Christocentric message because we have loads of content that is going to push you to your next level. You're about listening to another message by the man of God, Apostle Joshua Salma. Sit back as the Lord ministers to you. And if you're new here, kindly hit on that subscribe button. Don't forget to like our message and share abroad as well. Comment in that comment section. I'll see you again. Bye-bye. The privilege to be here tonight. Lift your voices wherever you are. Those online, connect with us as we pray together. Lord, we thank you. We trust you. We believe you. Tonight, we ask that you will help us. Make sure you are praying. We have come to access wisdom. We have come to access light. We cry for light. We cry for illumination. Grant us that which will empower us. Shabratus calabrianda gatus calabrishka. Ezebriatus calabrandos as lebratus. Hallelujah. I'd like you to pray one prayer before we sit. I'd like you to cry and say, Father, open the eyes of my understanding. Can you pray that prayer from the depth of your heart? Lord, open the eyes of my understanding. Give me access to light, access to illumination, access to light. Access to light, access to illumination. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My faith reaches out to you, and I believe your word for me. Sing it and I believe. I believe. We hand over this teaching session. And we pray that you prevail over our minds, prevail over our spirits until there is conformity. Prevail over us until we become that which is expected according to the heart and the desire of the Father. We submit ourselves to your word and we ask that you teach us tonight in the name of Jesus Christ. It's good to be back home. Good to have everybody around. Please greet one another and be seated. Greet one another and please be seated. Thank you, worship team. God bless you. We have a lot to do tonight. We're starting a new series. And um, I want us to do the best we can to redeem the time. Amen. I'm excited every time I have the opportunity to come before us and teach because I have learned through experience that one of the ways to bless people is to enlighten them. Hallelujah. You can give people money, you can give people privileges, but one of the ways you bless people is to enlighten them. Unfortunately, we live in a generation that frowns at enlightenment because enlightenment is intangible and we have been trained by our environments to be carnal. We always want something we can hold 
and relate with here and now, such as money, clothes, cars, and all of these very, very mundane things. But the informations that are intangible, that empower us, usually we do not have the patience to submit. Uh, I was having a conversation with one of the protocol people while I was on my way coming, and I was driving and I looked at him. He was sitting at the other side. And I was wondering why I was looking at him while I was driving at the same time. And I told him, I said, look, my friend, you will never succeed in life if you are not mentored and trained. And he looked at me. I said, listen carefully to what I'm about to teach when we come. And I was giving him instances. I have learned and I am more convinced than ever before that training and mentorship is how successful people are made. It's not one of the ways. It's the only way. There are no options. Any other person giving you an option is a sign that he doesn't know what he's saying. Their mentorship and training is the only way people can become sustainably successful. Truthfully speaking, mentorship is not listening to a man speak to you. Listen carefully. That's attendance. Mentorship is not opening up your ears to a man's teachings and having the teachings in your, your archives, your laptops, your systems. It may be a pathway, but mentorship starts with a decision that I am willing to submit myself to be taught and I will insist till I understand. Praise God. Mentorship does not start with the availability of information. It starts with a determination from the heart of the one who will be the recipient. It's a manifestation of humility to admit that there are dimensions that we do not yet see and know and have. Regardless of what our achievements are, when we come before God and we come before people he has anointed to teach, to train, to build, it is important that you assume the position of a student immediately and listen carefully and not just take notes but write it in the tablets of your heart and then obtain grace that's why we pray after every message why we are obtaining grace to walk in the reality of what we have heard the bible says now that ye know these things happy are you if you do them it's one thing to know but it's another thing to have the grace to do brothers and sisters listen I may not boast, it will be arrogant to boast of knowing everything. Nobody knows everything. It will be arrogant to make a boast to claim to have arrived. But one thing I can tell you is if you submit yourselves to these teachings wholeheartedly under God, you will never fail. Regardless, it's, it's not a prayer, it's the resultant effect. Trust me on this. The ideas that we communicate to you in this house are not necessarily my ideas alone. They have been age-long ideas that have been used by men and women who changed the course of history. They have been age-long ideas that our fathers have used to do mighty things for God. And now God has granted us the privilege to access these ideas. So I don't want you, whilst you are listening to these things, to have a cynical heart debating whether or not you think is worthy of acceptance. Uh, personally, I've made a commitment to believe and work with them. So whether or not you do not believe it, it does not affect my outcome. Because you see, success is not corporate. Everybody will have to obey himself into the promised land. I can help you, but I can't force you there. I came tonight with a very strong burden and I was very excited when the Lord put this in my heart. It had been something that I had planned to share, but um, I mean, it was, it was so powerful when the Lord put it in my heart. I really want you to succeed. God sees my heart and um, the leaders know how much we are passionately committed about the success of everyone. I believe and have held this conviction for years. And I have taught many, including our students in the school of ministry, that loyalty 
Loyalty. Loyalty is a debt that you must pay. When people are loyal to you, it's as though you owe them something. When people are loyal to your anointing, loyal to your words, loyal to your grace, loyal to the dealings of God upon your life, you must reciprocate that loyalty by ensuring that their trust is not disappointed. That's why we pray. That's why we fast. That's why we prepare. That's why we research. That's why we study to make sure that every information that you receive is not only spiritual, but life applicable and indomitable. Having a character that can suppress whatever limitations. Hallelujah. So pray one more time and say, Lord, I submit myself afresh. Please pray from your heart. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Affect my life, breathe on me. I look to you for life. Hallelujah. Success systems, part one. Success systems, part one. Success Systems Part 1 The goal of this series is twofold. Number one, to reveal to us the requirements. The requirements that must be satisfied for you to experience lasting kingdom success. Number two, to unveil to you the laws, the principles, the secrets, the mysteries that are responsible for commanding success from God's standpoint. It's an attempt to help our lives bear fruit. It's an attempt to make and help contribute to making our lives meaningful. It's an attempt to improving the quality of our lives and to help us um, in our quest to become effective spiritual people effective kingdom ambassadors it's an attempt to create balance to every area of our life so that we are not unfruitful in any aspect so this is a very powerful series we're starting off with part one and um, i pray that god will help us two scriptures very quickly and then we'll take the course content second second peter chapter 1 verse 8 please media we need to work with us very very fast tonight media help us second peter 1 verse 8 and then we'll look at genesis 39 verse 2 to 6 it says for if these things be in you what things certain informations certain traits for if these things be in you and abound are lavish it says they make you that you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in this context it says in the knowledge of the lord jesus christ but it applies to every area of life if these things are bound in you and they are lavish they will produce an effect the effect is that they can stop barrenness and unfruitfulness from your life it didn't say if these things be around you if these things be in you if you believe them and buy them then it says you shall neither be barren nor unfruitful genesis 39 four verses two to six genesis 39 and the lord was with joseph and he was a prosperous man and he was in the house of his master the egyptian we're reading to verse 6 and his master saw that the lord was with him and that the lord 
did what made all that he did to prosper in his hand and joseph found favor or grace in his sight and he served him and he made him overseer over his house and all that he had put in his hands verse 5 and it came to pass from that time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had that the lord blessed the egyptian's house for joseph's sake and the blessing of the lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field the last verse and he left all that he had in joseph's hand everybody say trust and he knew not what and he knew not what he had save the bread which he did eat and joseph was a goodly person and well favored help us tonight in the name of jesus christ write down the things we are going to be considering in this series please write those online follow us or at least you'll be patient to allow the media lead you there are a few things that we are going to be looking at and wherever we can stop tonight we'll stop and pray but please i want to take my time and teach you this i want you to understand it and i trust that god will take advantage of this series to bless and lift us in jesus name the first thing we'll be considering tonight is the reality of failure how real is failure is it a mirage or is it real number two we're going to look at the concept of success in the kingdom number two we're going to look at the concept of success in the kingdom what is God's idea of a successful person the concept of success in the kingdom number three we're going to look at the concept of laws and principles The concept of laws and principles can I continue number four definition of terminologies there's too much confusion so we need to clarify terminologies as it regards or as it relates to kingdom success definition of terminologies and then number four number five thank you the laws of success the laws of success we're going to be examining the laws and then number six will end with a very strong impartation and trust god to carry something that will activate these dimensions in our lives praise the lord if you believe it say amen yeah. now statistically speaking statistically speaking five out of every hundred people ever become successful in their lifetime five percent out of every hundred people that you see only about five percent of them ever become successful whether from a human standpoint in fact when you say from a divine standpoint the statistic reduces again very few people a young man gets up living his life bubbling with joy hoping he will be successful and you see the the excitement of life on his face but that same young man Give him 70, 80 years down the line is a testimony of pain, a testimony of regrets, a testimony of sadness, lost opportunities, mishandled laws, a life of fatal failure. Most people die in pain. Most people die advising their children, don't be like me. Most people die apologizing to their generation because they finally are forced to swallow the bitter pill and admit they did not make it. Pastors, business people, parents, young people, the same challenge is eating up our society. The correct definition of success and a life that will become a template and a model enough worthy of emulation as far as kingdom success is concerned 
so it's, it's a big issue it's a tragedy that about five percent can you imagine that out of every hundred people whether they are church goers fasting giants prayer warriors five percent of them eventually will become successful whether in ministry whether in business in fact um it, it is said that over 70 to 80 percent of churches that start up end by the end of that year they can't continue no members no resources no wisdom spiritual forces that they've not been able to surmount and other auxiliary factors that add to enforce the failures of people write this down failure is real failure is real second point failure will happen to you if you allow it i think it's a revelation many of us need to come to terms with we have this inheritance mindset that by default just because you have a nice name or you think you are too kind to fail there's no such reality in the school of success let me tell you everybody is a potential candidate for failure until you exempt yourself is a reality that is upon us by default <laughs> a lot of spiritual people will say i reject it you better listen quietly to what i'm saying i am a very spiritual person i have learned the foolishness the foolishness of exaggerating truth beyond the jurisdiction of their relevance is what causes failure as a side effect please listen carefully i love you too much to deceive you I love you too much to mislead you and one of the graces god has given us in this ministry is capacity for balance so anything you hear that you do not understand just be patient by god's grace i'm a good builder every house is built by some man he says but god is the builder of all and so we will not build a house that is lopsided we'll build a house that stands solid on the rock no matter what shakes it it remains there say amen failure is real brothers and sisters there are pastors who are failures regardless of their spirituality there are churches that are failing and have failed some of us here seated right now it's an uncomfortable truth but right now if you will admit you know you are failing woefully for many of us are we together now yes disappointed expectations and it's important that we find out God's system to bail ourselves out and do so very, very fast. So failure is real. Failure is very real. We see it every day. You see failure in the face of angry people who walk upon our streets. You see failure in the face of failed marriages. A man and a woman who love themselves and have an agreement to live happily and right now you see someone age 24 and he tells you i have divorced how long did you marry six months one year how about failed businesses how about failed career pathways how about failed ministries how about disappointed expectations i should enter a particular dimension of the anointing by now and after donkey years, you are still there wallowing around in mediocrity. Failure is real. It lives among us. We see it in the faces of our dear loved ones. We see it in the frustration of our parents. You watch them and you know they are frustrated. Some of them are too arrogant to admit it. So they act as though they are still in control. But many have been forced, painfully so, to admit that there is something they are missing many people have been forced amplified by the recession to swallow their pride and admit i'm not getting something right nobody becomes a success by accident nobody becomes a success by chance by luck Yesterday, I was ministering at a crusade and 
I gave an instance. I think I've, I've given that instance here. And I want to repeat that example. Watch this. If I make a mistake and forget that there is a step down and then I sleep and I march, will gravity forgive me and say, no, I know you were joking. You were not serious. Next time be serious. No. Gravity does not have in its configuration the assumption that men make mistake. Every time I violate that law of gravity, I pay for it and I do so immediately. And sometimes I may not have a second chance again. This is how success is. And this is how failure is. Listen, many well-intentioned people, many Christians born again and filled with the Holy Spirit have indoctrinated themselves into believing that just because of that status, their life should succeed automatically. No. Being a Christian gives you the potential and the access for success. There is a difference between access and delivery. Access means potentials. Delivery means experience. Listen very carefully. All that Jesus Christ did for us on the cross gives us access. But there are systems built in the dealings of God with men that convert access to delivery where you are now a a manifesto of those realities one of my very great mentors dr mike mudok he's taught the body of christ for a very long time that there are two dimensions to the dealings of god with man there are two dimensions to the approach of spiritual things number one he calls it the person of jesus and number two, he calls it the principles of Jesus. Number one, he calls it the life of God. Number two, he calls it the laws of God. Everybody say the life of God. Say the person of Jesus. Say the principles of Jesus. And Mike Mudok teaches that the person of Jesus is what gives you that encounter that creates your peace and secures your eternal destiny with God. But it's not necessarily the key for your victory here and now. Are we together now? So I can be born again, filled with the Holy Spirit. If I die, I'm going to heaven. If Jesus comes, I'm going to heaven. I can live a life of peace, whether in plenty or lack, because his person has consumed me. I have conformed to the image of the Christ, experientially but then the dimension that is responsible for my success and victory on earth is not just the person of jesus but the principles of jesus everybody say the principles of jesus that means i can be born again filled with the holy spirit and yet be sick born again filled with the holy spirit and yet be poor born again filled with the holy spirit and yet fail in career born again filled with the holy spirit and become a total failure in life such a possibility exists now most christians have embraced the life of god but we have ignored his principles are we together now and most unbelievers have ignored the life of god but embraced his principles so most of them are going to hell because they have openly declared that jesus is not lord over their lives but they have lived their entire lives applying the kingdom applying the principles of the kingdom and i've taught you here in koinonia that there is a dimension of god's power that is programmed into his laws so that whoever obeys them will get the result regardless of whether he has a relationship with god or not there is a dimension of the power and the ability of god that is programmed in laws so it doesn't matter who applies them there are certain dimensions that are privy to only believers it is only in christ that those dimensions can be obtained like peace like the joy in the holy ghost are we together now like the life of jesus security of your eternal destiny the ability to count it all joy when you face diverse temptations all of these attributes are not possible to the man who has not embraced christ but the principles of the kingdom the aspect that we have largely ignored i've shared with us on my my idea and i believe that that's god's idea of spiritual growth 
that there are two indices to measure a man's spiritual growth number one is the degree of your conformity to the image and the person of christ you're rising in character you are conforming experientially to the image of the christ but the second dimension the second index is your comprehension of the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom both are required together to say you are growing spiritually if all that is happening to you is conformity to the image of christ that is a lopsided and a biased growth if all that is happening to you is just access to the principles of the kingdom and you never encounter the person and the life you will be carnal and you will never become a spiritual man so the synergy between these two dimensions is what produce spiritual men who are relevant both in time and eternity if that is you say amen are we together so failure is very real i think it was a wise man i don't know who exactly who said doing the same thing consistently and expecting a different result is one of the definitions of insanity doing the same thing and hoping and wishing that that same thing you are doing will just change results by itself he said it's one of the definition of insanity in other words if your outcome is not consistent with your desire then you have to check what you believe and what you are doing are we together now everyone say failure is real and it's not my portion write this down the word success let's define it let's look at the concept of success in the kingdom lord give us understanding give us passion to learn please give us isaiah 117 a scripture just came into my spirit and i want you to see it isaiah chapter 1 verse 17 Write this word down. Success. What is the definition of success? I'm, I'm trying to introduce the concept of success. Because, please look up. The body of Christ has had issues for a very long time. There are many denominations and there are many Christians. Some of them looking at me right now. Many listening to me online. Every time you mention the word success, especially in church and to a Christian, there is this build up of resentment. We have associated success with carnality. We have taught and indoctrinated ourselves into believing that there are two groups of people in the body of Christ. Those who are carnal, they don't love God and want to be successful. And those who are total failures now for the sake of their spiritual growth. There's no such doctrine in the Bible. The Bible says looking up to Jesus, not up to a denomination, not up to a pastor. It's important to follow us, but be sure we are following Christ. And if at any point you are not following Christ, it is within your power to switch. Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. I have shared with us again the danger of creating doctrines out of personalized dealings. That a man can have a particular bias which may be a product of his cultural limitation let me tell you something many of these doctrines that were shipped into the church and, and you know i love the body of christ and i don't say it with any particular sense of cynicism i'm teaching the body and so we must realize that most of these things that have become stumbling blocks listen carefully many of us have inherited this from our parents many of our, our loved ones so spiritual and well-meaning but this this um mindset especially for all of us who are around the middle belt and the northern area because of the evangelical nature of christianity and the way we received it we have been taught that any attention that is paid to your comfort and giving your life some sense of meaning here and now is useless so in an attempt to emphasize the fact that we need to live with eternity in view we have created a system of mediocrity and camped around it so there are many lazy men who have used evangelical christianity as an excuse to keep them lazy 
keep their wives and their children in poverty and penury and suffering there are men today who have not have not been working for over 20 years and it, it doesn't matter one room with your children they were born and bred there and he said the most important thing is this world is not our home one day we are going somewhere it's an expression of carelessness so there are many doctrines that have endorsed laziness and thus irresponsibility and thus lack of productivity so the average believer has been unable to rise to a position of kingdom influence where we can legislate on behalf of the kingdom it's a tragic situation please give us the scripture again he said read the first four words if you are a christian one to read again the word do well is the word succeed. So change it and use it well. One to go. Again. He didn't say be successful. He says learn. You must be taught. He says learn to do well. It's not just saying make it. Uh -uh. Learn. Be taught your Submit yourself under the atmosphere and the information that will cause you to do well. When I saw that scripture, it was quite instructive. Learn to succeed. Joshua Selman, learn. It is not in you by default. Learn. The same way. Um, where is he? Doctor. It's not a doctor by default. But you learn to become a doctor. You learn to become an architect. Are we together? You learn to become a mother. That's why when ladies give birth for the first time, their mothers or any of their guardians come around right and help them they can read books and google and search but it's one thing to have that theory and then all of a sudden the mother comes and says okay i will help you and then helps her and she becomes strong and then tomorrow she will help her own children learn say i will learn and i will succeed say i will learn i will be trained and I will succeed. Look at this. When you want to become a doctor, what do you do? You pass through the medical school. Correct? When you want to become an engineer, what do you do? You pass through the engineering school. When you want to become an architect, what do you do? You pass through the system. So when you want to become a success, what do you do? Unfortunately, there is no official institution for making people successful. You see why many people are failures? There are many graduates because there are many universities. There are many primary school certificate holders because there are many primary school. There are many prisoners because there are many prisons and there are many opportunities for crime. But there are few successful people because there are few successful mentors and there are few successful platforms that can help men become successful learn to do well write this down success is the accomplishment of a worthy goal write it down the word success has nothing to do with money it has nothing to do with all of these things success is the accomplishment of a worthy goal any goal that is ideal that is worthwhile when you set goals and achieve them, you are said to be successful. This is the general definition of success. The accomplishment of a worthy goal, a worthy ideal. I want to become a doctor. And then you pass through the system and you become a doctor. With respect to that goal, you are successful. I want to become a joyful mother and you walk towards it. And then eventually you get married and have your children. With respect to that goal, you are successful. So without goals, there is no basis for being successful. Are we together now? The accomplishment of a worthy goal, a worthy ideal, is what we call success. Now let me give you a kingdom definition of success. I've given you a general definition. Let's look at a kingdom definition. Write this down. The fulfillment of your God-given assignment is called success from God's standpoint. The fulfillment 
of your God-given assignment, not just any goal. If an armed robber says, I must steal, and then he steals successfully, from an earthly standpoint, we say he has succeeded. From, but from the kingdom standpoint, it's not a success. The fulfillment of your divine assignment, the fulfillment of your God-given assignment is called success. Another definition. The effective use. This is my own definition now. The effective use of your life, your gifts, and your resources to draw men to Jesus and bless humanity is called success. I'll take it again. The effective use of your life, comma, your gifts, comma, your resources to draw men to Jesus and then to be a blessing to humanity is my definition of success. So when you use your life like a drink offering, when you use your gifts and when you use your resources, to draw men to Jesus and then an opportunity to be a blessing to humanity by God's standpoint and by men's standpoint you are a success are we together now the effective use of your life the effective use of your gifts the effective use of your resources to draw men to Jesus and then to bless humanity to advance the purposes of the kingdom and to be a blessing to humanity that's success are you blessed now very important I, I need all of us to have this understanding so that when we talk about success we are not talking of some money-mongering greedy lifestyle because this is another side of the pendulum there are many people who are so carnal so fleshly the entire circumference of their christian experience is just money and houses and cars everything about their understanding of god is the one who gives my job is to just take take and be rich take and buy suit buy designers right move around the world in private jets and then we coin that and say this is my life it is a very misguided and not only misguided destructive idea about success that's what puts people under pressure to try to acquire things because we hope that by acquiring things will prove a point to people now the truth is if you are successful it will show around you but the acquisition of things is not equivalent to success in the kingdom that you are wearing a suit of a thousand or two thousand dollars you are wearing shoes you are having estates all around and you're a great man moving around and people bow down to you and people call you all kinds of names and you have multiplied troubles multiplied psychophants that does not make you a success how much you use your life how much you use your gifts how much you use your resources to draw men to Jesus and then to live a life of impact blessing your world blessing your humanity every other thing cars houses all these auxiliary benefits are just effects of success not the proof of success the proof you have succeeded is the joy in the heart of the father the proof you have succeeded is a life transformed not a car in your garage the proof that you have succeeded is somebody coming to know jesus because you did business well somebody coming to know jesus because you read your book well somebody coming to know jesus because of your marriage somebody coming to love jesus because of your ministry when your life has the capacity to draw men regardless of what area you are functioning to jesus and then an opportunity to make a mark to transform their lives you are successful by this definition you will agree with me that there are very few people who are successful there are many rich people but they are not successful there are many educated people but they are not successful haven't seen this definition why then 
are many people failures what is the reason is it that there is no access to knowledge is it that satan is so powerful and can veto everything jesus died for is it that uh, though if the few who are successful were just designed by god to be successful why do we have a whole generation as failures a whole community as failures i will tell you why because of one word just one word is called dishonor i'm going to be teaching you a lot of things we're still going to come to this issue of honor there is one reason why any one of you here will be a failure in life only one reason it's not that you didn't go to school it's not that you graduated with a third class no that's a silly excuse it's not that you are a northern man and they are victimizing you down south or you are a southern man and they are victimizing you down north or you are an eastern man and they are victimizing you those are very flimsy excuses they are obvious answers but not correct answers are we together there is only one reason why men fail in life dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles there's only one reason why people fail and there's only one reason why they will remain failures dishonor dishonor to god dishonor to men dishonor to principles is god helping us write this down laws and principles laws and principles l a w s and then principles i want us to examine the concept of laws and principles jesus thank you look at me in any other and every other aspect of our lives we believe in laws and principles but when it comes to our spiritual lives and our destinies we do not believe that they walk by principles it's a tragedy it's a tragedy please hear me brothers and sisters it's a tragedy when you go to school you know that there are laws and principles you are a science-based student they teach you all kinds of science things physics chemistry they teach you how to do a lot of things they teach you what to do they teach you laws different kinds of laws and the more you master those laws the more you keep advancing and then eventually when you have gained certain dimensions of mastery they award certain certificates to you but when it comes to destiny we have been indoctrinated into believing that we are just believers and whether we respect laws or not we will become successful i will tell you where our resentment for laws came from the imbalance and the inaccurate teaching of the concept of law and works this is where we got our resentment for the word laws great men and women of god scattered across the face of the earth in an attempt and i believe everything that they teach in an attempt to explain or to bring the body of christ into the reality of christ's finished work listen carefully in an attempt to show how that the old is gone the old testament you know and that we are products of this new testament now in an attempt to help believers live the victorious life we have from one person copying another without finding out what exactly is being said we have drifted to another side of the pendulum and so the average believer especially the average pentecostal charismatic believer when you hear the word laws when you hear the word principles you just reject it you don't even need to know law of what you just say no 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 i'm not under the law write this down laws are systems is a system of rules that guarantee a predictable outcome a law is a system of rules or just a system of operation either a system of rules or a system of operation that guarantees a predictable outcome so laws are systems of operations they are systems of rules that if and when diligently applied guarantee predictable
predictable outcomes. Write this down. Laws are a reflection of God's justice system. Laws are a reflection of God's justice system. The Bible says righteousness and justice are the foundations. It didn't say where. It never changed. Righteousness and justice are still the foundations of his throne. Laws are a reflection of God's justice system. So that nobody will say God victimized others and did certain things. No. He leaves it into your hands to define whether or not you will succeed or fail. Write this down. Laws are the keys to consistency and predictability. Laws are the keys. Please pay attention. Especially those following online, wherever you are, I want you to please pay attention. Take notes if you can't follow us on Facebook and, and we're tweeting and then we're we are making posts. Please follow. I have a passion to help you understand this. Laws are the keys to consistency and predictability. Write this down. When your results do not change regardless of obstacles, then you are operating by laws. When your results your outcomes do not change regardless of the prevailing obstacles is a sign that you are engaging laws hallelujah so you see a ministry celebrating 36 years a ministry celebrating 40 years people like kenneth copeland benny Hinn, 40 something years in ministry brothers and sisters that ministry was built by laws it was not just built by emotions many great corporations across the world i don't know what the oldest um retail outfit is in nigeria the oldest restaurant in nigeria but we have very great um restaurants across the nation of the earth right like Colonel sanders and his kentucky fried chicken and a number of people walmart and all of this some of those outfits are hundreds of years old the founders have long been dead but the laws kept it write this down laws make your results outlive you laws and principles make your results outlive you laws and principles make your results outlive you Write this down finally and then I'll begin to teach. Correct understanding and application of laws are the keys to outstanding success. Correct understanding and application of laws are the keys to outstanding success. Correct understanding, not just application, correct understanding and application of laws and principles are the keys to outstanding success everybody look at this mike is playing something do you know that the same way he's playing this if someone in ghana if someone in america plays based on whatever sequence is playing they will get the same result because they are based on laws is that true please help me with this This is Nestle water. How many of you know there's Nestle water in Lagos? How many of you know there's Nestle water in Ibadan? How many of you know there's Nestle water in Maiduguri? The taste is almost the same, if not the same. The packaging and everything. When you look at this one and leave and go to a shop somewhere and you look at it, you would think they took the one here, there. There is consistency in results. There is sustainability. There is predictability. There are many workers. Those who package this in Lagos may not be those who package it in another geopolitical zone. But they are all governed by the same laws. So their results are the same. Correct? Thank you. Um, Pastor Femi, please come. My friend, please come. Two of you, please stand here. Now look how smart they are both looking. Stand here, please. Now look at this. Pastor Femi has a knotted tie 
and this gentleman here has a knotted tie now watch this were you in the same room when you were not in your ties did you meet yourselves did you know you were going to knot ties but you took this rope did something to it and it became this and you see how much it looks like the same thing both of them were miles apart but engaging the same principle and regardless of their location the results were the same are we together now now this guy would not say lie lie i'm not going to not because i'm not in koinonia no if a thief not this tie to dress smart and go and steal the tie will not say you are a thief in two hours you are about to steal i won't agree no laws laws if a wicked man plants maize and a tongue-talking born-again agriculturist plants maize both lands will produce and in fact this guy may even have a bumper harvest correct laws create similarity of results so if i want to teach someone else how to be a smart gentleman like this not in ties i don't need to tell him come and live with me forever i just need to show him how to convert a rope a nylon rope or a cotton rope are we together now to become such a beautiful object that you can put on your neck thank you sirs so it's not just where you are it's not just your background there is something you do not know you've heard me say it many times something i do not know is responsible for my limitation in life how true how true the correct understanding and application of laws are the keys to outstanding success we had a great time over at bida um, we rounded off the meeting yesterday and i'm sure some of them are following it was such a great time as god always does in the meetings and i had a little session with the leaders and many of them kept asking me questions man of god what is the secret to your anointing and i in my mind i thought i said if i tell these people now they will not believe it you see that as i'm speaking to you right now somebody in another meeting unconnected to koinonia is still experiencing wisdom and the power of god at the same time you look at a graduate from unn you look at a graduate from abu you look at a graduate from unilag bring all of them together haven't never met themselves but they were submitted to the same laws they will talk as though they know they've known themselves for years correct that means there is something all of us can know that regardless of where you are all of us will call and they'll say are you experiencing the same result you say exactly as said do you believe that honestly if you don't believe this just go home because it will be that you are wasting your time this night the, the goal of this teaching is to create predictability to your success success is is success important somebody may be asking me be patient and ask me five years from now remain the way you are and keep going I will be glad to answer you five years from now when you watch what happened to those who are five years ahead of you now when you watch the pain when you watch three children stand before you and say daddy we are hungry when you watch your child become an arm robber simply because of failure then you will ask that question again is success important it's a terrible thing please be careful how you listen to people don't criticize men of god don't criticize leaders even business experts be careful right now we have all kinds of business experts anyone just chokes himself with tie holding all kinds of hilarious seminars everywhere and teaching all kinds of garbages and nonsense and in the end of it you are so motivated because of the rhetorics and the gimmicks that are used and then at the end of it you find out that your life is just an emotional roller coaster and you get back into square one be careful
I desire to succeed with my life. I have tasted a bit of it. It gives me joy to be able to lead a flourishing ministry. I know how painful it is to suffer and struggle in ministry. I know how painful it is to come and prepare as a man of God and not have anybody to bless. Today, by the grace of God, we are reaching several nations of the world and we are only starting. I have tasted a bit of the potency of these laws and I know they work. They will work for you in the name of Jesus Christ. They will work for you in the name of Jesus Christ. One of, I think is I think his patients, I spot her here. She sent me a text, very, very funny text. And um, she's a student in the school of ministry. And I'd been teaching them a number of things. And then she, she went to Zamfara and had an opportunity to pray for someone to be filled with the Holy Spirit. According to her, she was shaking and wondering whether it will happen. And I mean, in minutes, that person was shaking and blasting in tongues. And she called me and said, my God, look at this thing. And then she tried it on another person and it worked flawlessly. Predictability. Predictability. There are keys. Nobody is born rich. Nobody is born blessed. Are we together? He said, in iniquity did my mother conceive me. Your, you can live out like that or you can change. I made a decision that I will change. It's a decision that I made. And I want you tonight, if you have not made that decision, to make a strong decision. I'm taking it gradually with us because I want us to understand this. Let's define terminologies, right? We are going to define 14 words that we'll be playing around with in this series. 14 words that have been misunderstood. I don't want to make the mistake of believing that when I mention a word, all of us understand that this is what I'm saying. Write it down. The first word, I've already defined it, success. The accomplishment of a worthy goal. Am I boring you? Please write. The second word I want us to define and familiarize ourselves with is failure. What is failure? Write it down. That's the second word. I'll be very, very fast so that we can stop somewhere and pray. Jesus, we bless you. Failure is a state or condition of not meeting a desirable or intended objective. Failure is a state or a condition of not meeting a desirable or intended objective. You are said to have failed when you do not meet up to a desirable objective or an intended objective. The inability to meet your desired or intended objectives generally speaking is regarded as failure word number three favor what is favor and um maybe i may dwell a bit here just trying to explain a few things because our general mainstream definition of favor especially in the body of christ is very limited it does not bring out the substance especially when it has to do with favor with men generally we define favor as on merited access you know and that is right we define favor as grace that is right but let me give you three definitions of favor very quickly number one favor means help full stop favor means what help h-e-l-p help whether divine or human favor means help still defining favor what is favor god and men contributing to ensure that you succeed what is favor god and men contributing to ensure that you succeed that's favor when god comes into partnership with you when men come into partnership with you to ensure that you succeed then you are said to be a favored person. God and men contributing to ensure that you succeed. Number three, what is favor? Men investing their time, credibility, and resources to help you achieve your goals. 
what is favor men investing their time men investing their credibility men investing their resources to help you achieve your goals when a man invests his time that's favor when a man endorses you puts his reputation and credibility on the line to make sure you rise that's favor when men invest their resources be it spiritual financial whatever it is to help you achieve your goals that's favor never forget these three definitions they are powerful definitions word number four grace let's define grace word number four grace I wrote something down I had to tear it out of my little note I want to read it for you one day I was inspired and I wrote it down about grace just pay attention as I listen as I read grace as understood by many is seen as unmerited access listen to me this very confusion exaggeration over the powerful concept of grace stems from this one definition okay the very confusion and exaggeration over the powerful concept of grace stems from this one definition a very correct and biblical definition but very limiting to define grace only as unmerited access is a correct definition it is biblical but it is very limiting and sometimes can be destructive grace this is what i define grace as no i will tell you just just listen to me i'm, I'm giving you my contemplations just listen grace is a multi-dimensional reality in the realm of the spirit and in the dealings of god with men that doesn't just refer to things unmerited but realities and provisions that are exclusively found or domiciled and accessed from god in christ in other words the definition of grace is not just limited to things unmerited but it is also anything that comes from god are we together now it is a generic expression that attempts to communicate a reality a provision a possibility of things not obtained from the earth realm but from god and only in and through christ now listen i wrote this down this definition allows for other dimensions of grace to be captured and experienced this morning the holy spirit okay this is me writing permit me i'm reading as i just wrote directly this morning the holy spirit himself gave me the best and most concise definition of grace i have ever heard and known and i'll tell you what the holy spirit told me about grace ready james 1 17 this is how the holy spirit defined grace for me james 1 17 please put it up for us very fast let's see how we can gain time james 1 17 this is the definition of grace read it one to read every good and perfect every good gift and every perfect gift that comes from above and cometh down from the father of light stop is called grace anointing is grace wisdom is grace promises achieved is grace anything that is not within the jurisdiction of the earth realm that requires coming down from heaven from the father of light and can only be available in christ and through christ is called grace let me finish this i wrote something down every good gift the word gift there please leave that scripture up let me just explain something the word gift there is the word dosis and it means the act of giving and every perfect gift is the word dorema 
which means the thing given so it talks about both the thing given and the act of giving are we together now then it says is from above and all of that now this scripture shows that grace is not limited to gifts alone but the very act of communicating things from god to men is called grace are you getting my point now so that grace is not just a thing you collect the very act of communicating with god is called grace now i define grace for you write this down grace is the sum total grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by god comma i'll take it again grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by god but only in and through christ grace is the sum total of any and all things made available to man by god but only in and through christ so the anointing is an expression of grace prosperity is an expression of grace salvation an expression of grace protection all of these things are expressions of grace look at me when you define grace only as unmerited access then there is no space for obedience to be featured in grace are you hearing what i'm saying now now when you obey and get results it is true that what god is giving you is unmerited in that you cannot receive it are we together now but being unmerited does not stop the fact that there are conditions to fulfill the cheapest thing we get is salvation and even salvation requires a response you use your mouth you use your hands you use your legs you use your tears there is a participation the gift is unmerited but the act of receiving is merited are we together whosoever calls on the name of the lord shall be saved whosoever does not call upon the name of the lord whosoever believes in him shall have life everlasting whosoever does not believe in him is condemned already these are the words of jesus please don't limit grace to just unmerited access <laughs> grace is access definition number five let's hurry up works let's define works now that i've defined grace i have to define works because if i do not define works um then there will be a lot of confusion let me i also wrote something about works here listen to my contemplation about works and then we'll dictate works on the other hand should not be equated with action rather certain kinds of activities look up let me explain to you what i mean many times we have been taught the moment you hear the word works you just mean ah i'm not i don't have any works again you are joking you are joking we will work for the rest of our lives there is works works as defined in context to grace and in context to the old testament refers to certain kinds of activities that um were captured in the judaic laws and were captured in the commandments that were given to moses that men must do ceremonial activities to the end that they will be able to create a system of atonement for themselves that's what was abolished works is not the same as action action is still relevant for results do not equate works with actions the works of the law are different from works what was abolished was the works of the law i never will have to slaughter an animal again i never will have to mediate between a priest to help me reach god once and and forever christ has offered himself the veil has been torn that is true but to mean there is nothing else to do in terms of action in terms of obedience in terms of partnership in terms of participation is a joke 
the bible says we are saved by grace but that system works through faith and faith is not just believing and confessing is the summation of everything you do in obedience to fulfill the conditions that are tied to the results you desire it's called faith it's the word pistis it doesn't just mean conviction conviction first but the actions that are taken in partnership with that conviction to get a desired outcome what are works in the new testament every time we talk of works we mean one word obedience write it down works in the new testament is obedience works in the new testament is partnership please write this down every time we talk of works we are not talking about going back to the law ceremonial cleansings and all of these rituals that were captured in, in the Judaic law and then all the hilarious laws and the stringent conditions that the nation of Israel had to go through that has been abolished once and forever but obedience will always be a requirement always be a requirement partnership will always be a requirement so works equal obedience to the believer today Your partnership towards making promises manifest is what I call works. Your partnership towards making promises manifest is what we call works. We need to define this because I'm going to be playing around with these words. And um, it's important that all of us, when you hear it, you know what I'm saying. Number what now? Let's hurry up. I will rush now. Number six, excellence. Let's define excellence very quickly number six excellence what is excellence excellence means the highest level of quality available write it down the highest level of quality available is called excellence the highest level of quality available is called excellence another definition surpassing ordinary standards is called excellence so you are excellent to the degree to which you can produce the highest level of quality available you are excellent to the degree to which you surpass ordinary standards can i continue next word mediocrity what is mediocrity the quality of being average mediocrity is the quality of being average please participate pay attention to these words the quality of being average what does it mean to be mediocre to be common what does it mean to be mediocre to be indifferent the quality of being average the quality of being common the quality of indifference what does it mean to be mediocre ordinary like everyone else ordinary like everyone else is the attitude of mediocrity average common indifference like everyone else next definition eight am i right number eight relationships what are relationships write this down relationships are advantageous connections simple relationships are advantageous connections broadly speaking connections but with respect to what we are dealing with advantageous connections everyone say advantageous connections say it inside and outside advantageous connections write this down usually mutually beneficial usually mutually beneficial so we are talking about advantageous connections this is my definition that is usually mutually beneficial that means all the parties involved in that connectivity should benefit relationships can be both divine and human write it down relationships can be both divine and human it is possible to have a relationship with god it's possible to have a relationship with satan it's possible to have a relationship with a demon spirit it's possible to have a relationship with the holy spirit advantageous connections number nine knowledge what is knowledge thank you jesus what is knowledge the gathering or acquisition 
of information the gathering or acquisition of information or facts that's called knowledge the gathering or acquisition of information facts is called knowledge many of you are tired of writing that's the secret to your peace just keep writing what is knowledge awareness of familiarity what is knowledge awareness of familiarity that is gained through education or experience what is knowledge again awareness or familiarity that is gained through experience or through education can i continue number 10 understanding the 10th terminology we are defining understanding what is understanding comprehension comprehension in one word understanding is comprehension eleven wisdom we're almost there eleven wisdom correct application of knowledge also means accurate application of knowledge write it down wisdom is the correct application of knowledge also refers to the accurate application of knowledge when knowledge is applied accurately and correctly it's called wisdom distant shores and the islands will see your life as it rises on us distant shores and the islands will see your life as it rises on us do you know what do you know what i'm imagining i'm just imagining how many of you buy me cars and houses and say apostle thank you thank you thank you no no look you will be too blessed to do it even if you don't like me you will do it you will turn back one day i'll come to your house and when others are languishing i will see you together with your children giving god praise and say today is a day off we are just worshiping and blessing his name and people will say are you in nigeria you say no i i am only here but we, we 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 sit on a throne and we manipulate things according to our order remember i used to say this thing years ago believe it oh believe it i imagine you going to your mother and your father and saying mama i know you did not make it in this life but i have a surprise cover her eyes and take her somewhere and say mama the car you did not drive this is it let the devil do anything he would do do you think your mother will be happy you are going to someone's house and you are seeing them want to tear your members clothes because of rent I must kill you now. How much? 250,000. That's all right. That's all right. In two minutes, is there. God bless you. Not alone. I pray that God will help you. God will make this happen. Someone will step into your home and see peace between you and your children and be born again there. No preaching. And say, This is what I've been fighting. This is what I'm teaching you. If you pay attention, I don't care what tribe, I don't care what background, I don't care what is happening or not happening in your life. You listen to this, you will arise. Number 12, prosperity. Let's define prosperity. What does it mean to prosper? It means to do well. Quickly, please. Prosperity means to do well. Prosperity means to excel. Prosperity means to flourish. Prosperity means to thrive. It means to do well. It means to excel. It means to flourish. It means to thrive. That's what it means to prosper. Two more definitions and we're there. 
Number 13, goals. G O A L S. Goals. What are goals? Clearly defined desires, objectives, and outcomes. What are goals? Clearly defined desires, objectives, and outcomes. Clearly defined desires, objectives, and outcomes. 14, the last word. Value. V-A-L-U-E. Value. What is the definition of value? Write it down. Point of difference. What is the definition of value? Point of difference. Another definition, your uniqueness. Another definition, your skill. So what is value? Your point of difference. Your uniqueness. Your skill. Write this down under value. Everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and glorifying God is called value. I repeat. Everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and glorifying God is called value. Everything that constitutes an advantage in your life and is capable of blessing humanity and is capable of glorifying God is called value. Take a deep breath. You have tried. You have been writing. Some of you, that's a key to drive laziness. You've not done this in a long time. I gave you 14 definitions that have controlled the destinies of many. I gave you 14 definitions that are capable of changing your life from tonight. I gave you 14 definitions that will be the key between your joy or your pain. Listen, I gave you 14 definitions that will make your church, your ministry, your group excel or fail. I gave you 14 definitions that will tell us what you will become. Write this down. Success is predictable. I don't need to see your results to know whether you will be successful. Success is predictable now. I can look at your life now and predict with digital precision whether or not you will succeed. There are people I look at their lives and I know they will fail. It's a very sad truth. They will be offended and they will think, he's are you God? And then you see that you really fail. Failure is also predictable. Write it down. So success is predictable. Semicolon. Failure is also predictable. I can look at your life, brothers and sisters, and I can know that you are going to be a very powerful prayer warrior. You are going to be a very great word addict. But I know that as far as success is concerned, you may not be very successful. I can look at your life and I know that you are going to be a very rich man. You will buy the jets and the Rolls Royces, but you will never be a spiritual man. I can look at your life and know that you may be a happy man in terms of finances, but marriage you will pay a deep price. I can look at your life and know you are going to be a very good husband, but a very poor and broke man. I can look at your life and know that you are going to be a very intelligent graduate, but you may be jobless for the rest of your life or you may barely be employed and remain at the lower levels i can look at your life and know you will never rise to a managerial position listen the spirit realm is higher than the natural realm but it's not unpredictable we look at the clouds and we can forecast with a very commendable level of accuracy that there will be rain and it happens 
a pilot tells you we are landing at five minutes past one five minutes past one on the dot the tire is touching the ground we can we can tame our environment with that degree of accuracy what makes you think you need money in your account to prove you are successful i can look at you now and know that even if one million is in your account it will run away as fast as it came you know years ago as i began to pursue the things of the spirit i stumbled across materials that taught on this i folded them with speed and threw them one side said, look let me press on this how foolish i was imagine that i came for koinonia now and after preaching a powerful message i now tell you all of you you are going to sow my mind is not stable I'm, i need i need you have to pay my rent i'm blessing you the bible says a and b and c everybody stand up worship team you are bringing fifty thousand. prayer band you are bringing one million <laughs> Mega. <laughs> you are not praying for nothing. One million. Leaders, you are bringing two million. Oh, what a cost way of leadership. You will never bless anybody being a nuisance that way. God did not send me to be a nuisance to you. He sent me to bless you. Yes. It will never happen in this ministry. Where I will say, please, raise offering for me so that I can eat well. No. You know what we call escape velocity in physics? Where you have gone past certain things. It's not pride. It will never happen again till Jesus comes. I found my way to better days. <laughs> I found my way to better days. For many of you tonight, you're on your way to paradise. Let them laugh at you. You're on your way to paradise. Status is changed. No more time. I'm on my way to paradise. Prophesy to yourself. Status is changing. There's no more time. for one minute and say Lord I am truly changing I'm not just motivating myself for nothing there is a way that can lead a man out of misery there is a way that can lead a man out of a life of pain there is a way that can lead a man to the wealthy place there is a way that can lead a man to a life of impact, a life of dignity, a life of beauty, a life of peace, a life of glory. Hallelujah. Please sit down. Thank you. Sit down. Our time is gone. Let me teach for a few minutes and then we'll pray. Now we have had all the peripherals. Please listen, I want to teach you. You just sang that you are on your way to better days. For some of you, you were joking. For some of you, you were emotional. But for a few of you, you meant it. You know why? Let me ask all of you now in one minute. I want you to cast your mind at the worst thing you have seen happen to you and your parents. For some of you, is that you were thrown outside. For some of you, is that you had admission but there was no money to pay it. For some of you, is that you had to go and sleep with somebody somewhere to raise 10,000 and bring back home to eat. For some of you, 
is that you even found yourself in occultic groups because you wanted charm for protection or success. For some of you, there are men of God probably listening to me. You have had to under pressure join fraternities because you are hoping that it will give you ministry connection. Listen, if you don't do anything about your success, failure will force you to do wrong things. If you don't do anything about your success, failure will force you to do wrong things. When I look at people who say, God forbid, over my dead body, I will never do this and that, I tell them, keep quiet. You don't know the pressure that failure forces people. Pressure can make you do things you never imagined you would do. I've shared with you here, I think it's in Koinonia, years ago when I counseled a lady whose situation broke my heart and it motivated my appetite to understand its success. Her mother, true story, her mother was working with a boss and the father I think was not working and then they got to a point in their life where they were stranded. I, I don't know if it was whatever it is but it was a very serious issue and the woman went to the boss to plead if she could have a raise in her salary to allow her cater for the needs of the family being the chief burden bearer which is very wrong of the entire family and according to what the lady told me she said the boss looked at her own mother and said you are not a, a small girl you know what to do if you want to raise someone's mother matured lady you know what to do and the mother initially refused but when she went to meet the father the situation the pressure was overwhelming both of them agreed that the mother should want to sleep with the man now, yeah, I know you are, we have, we can shout in church. Ah, I won't do it. Don't talk like that because the person who did it is not an idiot. When somebody sits down with the head of a goat all through the night, he never planned it. That's what pressure me. When the girl told me that thing, do you know what happened? Do you know that after the man paid that woman her money the shame she had to still quit the job and leave when the lady told me i said oh god what is this we are here jumping in church saying since i was young now i am old i have never seen the righteous forsaken that is such a lie i've seen many righteous people forsaken though i've seen many of their seed beg for bread we sing it by faith and i believe it but i have seen many righteous people such as our parents such as your brother and your sister, you know them, they love God, they have been dejected and forsaken. They forsook loves and good things left them. Success is predictable. Failure is predictable. You can make up your mind from today that you are going to start a journey that will lead you into a dimension of success you can make up your mind today that you are going to begin in in a way and a dimension that you have never seen to obey these laws and excel let's start with at least one or two of the laws for tonight ready the laws of success thank you jesus Ready? The first law of success, the law of relationships. Write it down. The law of relationships. Ignore this and suffer for the rest of your life. Embrace this and watch your life change as though you are holding a charm. Everybody say the law of relationships. Shout it. The law of... Write this down. Success is highly relationship dependent. Success is highly relationship dependent. Your success and my success in life is highly relationship dependent. Number two, everything money can buy, relationships can buy it. Write it down. Everything 
I don't care what it is. Anything at all that money can buy, relationship can pay for it. Money can buy a house, relationships can buy a house. Money can help you build a church, relationship can help you build a church. Listen, money, as you know, naira and cobalt, dollars, pounds, yen. These things are not the only means of exchange. Relationship is currency. You can use it to pay for things. Relationship is currency. You can use it to pay for things. There are many ignorant people who want to be successful, but they do not know the law of relationships. So they have to look for money to pay for everything. You ask them and they tell you, I need 5 million. I need 10 million. Whereas the relationship you have is worth billions of naira in value and it is capable of paying for anything money can pay for. There are people who have had to pay hundreds of thousands in a seminar and another person relationship paid for it and it entered free. Are we together now? There are people who have had to pay for rent and others relationship has been paying their rent. There are people who have had to pay for everything in life. Listen, if you use money to buy everything in life, you are not wise. No. It is a total display of lack of wisdom to use finances to get everything in life. It has nothing to do with being rich. That's the mistake our parents made. I love our parents. Don't get me wrong. Some of you here are parents. We love you. We honor you with all our hearts. Most people think you only succeed when you start having salary. 100,000 coming. And they now say, wow, I have 100,000. Then they have a need. They ignore relationships. And something that would be cheaply paid for, they would have to look for money and pay for it. I have paid for many things in my life using relationship. Relationship like a debit card. You can use it and withdraw many other things. You can use it and pay for many other things. Relationships today by the grace of God has given me platforms. I am connected to people. Listen, connectivity is a key to success. You must be connected. Relationships can help you access anointings. Relationships can help you access endorsements. Relationships can help you access favor. 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 The major ingredient in success is favor. But it takes relationships. We have come with open arms. Oh, let the ancient words. Hallelujah. There are things in my life I would have paid for financially. Let me give you an example. This great auditorium, an act of kindness and benevolence by CGC. We have never paid a single couple for this venue. And some of you who are into real estate know if you value this and we have to pay every week for all of this. Imagine the millions of naira that relationship has made for yes. Something in your life that you are hoping to change today is relationship dependent. Something, a dimension in your life you must enter now is relationship dependent. Unfortunately, for many of us, all we know is just love relationship. Husband and wife, somebody who likes a lady, a lady likes him back. That, that's only an aspect of it. Your relationship with God is a key to your success. Correct? You excel in life on the strength of your relationship with God. The healthier your relationship with God, the healthier your relationship with the Spirit of God, the greater your success. The pro 
prodigal son, please help me with the sound, please. The prodigal son made a big mistake. He broke relationship to look for money. Are you seeing the mistake of the prodigal son? Thank you. He, he jeopardized the potential for relationship. He had a relationship with his father. And on the strength of his relationship with his father, he did not pay for food. He did not pay for protection. But here's what he said. I don't want relationship. I rather want money. And he ended relationship and got money. What happened to the money? Without relationships, your finances will always be finite. There is only so much. Relationship is the secret of continual financial flow. Relationship is the secret. It is relationship that will keep finances. I'm not talking about finances necessarily, but I'm just using it as a case study. Relationships. People have blessed me today purely based on relationships. Not even as in the capacity as a, of, of a man of God. Just to bless. Do you know that somebody in Zaria today has the heart to bless you, but you do not have the connection? Are you hearing what I'm saying now? Somebody has the capacity to pay for your rent without begging and without lying. Somebody has the capacity to give you free land purely based on relationship. During my birthday, people did things for me that almost brought tears from my eyes. I, I usually am not into celebrating birthdays and the rest. The leaders did something touching. Different people did things, but there were certain strategic blessings and things that were done. that I said, God, what is this? What is this? Relationships. Relationship can give you access to realms where your physical qualification should not allow you to enter there. Many of us have been trivializing relationships. That's why we keep hustling. The Bible says the labor of the fool where yet every one of them, he does not know the road to the city. By the grace of God, I understand the ministry of destiny helpers. The ministry of destiny helpers is futile without relationship. God has used me as a destiny helper to many. God has used many people as destiny helpers to me. Hallelujah. Cheap victories that many of us lose. Cheap victories. Some of our parents do not know anybody. And so you pay for everything. And when you want to use money alone to be successful, a day will come you will have all the money in your life. And you'll find out that there are some things money cannot do. Are we together? There are people, you know, one of the greatest, this is one of the greatest lessons that I've learned from my father. My father is a man who was wealthy in relationships. I used to think he was just, you know, you know, just someone who just likes people. But now that I've grown, I have seen the wisdom. Relationship paid many bills for my father. Relationships. Let me tell you something. Relationship is an investment. The same way you invest in business is the way you invest in relationship. All this something for nothing is, is a joke. There are many of us, we have this self-flattery. They don't like me. You don't call me, I won't call you. Sit down there. The day you need the person you don't call, that's when you know relationships are important. Relationships are very serious, value-adding investments. There are times you will call your destiny helper, he will not respond. There are times you will send him 100 naira credit. There are times you will say, sir, just to appreciate you. You will take out time to compose a text message as if you died there. And he will just send you one word, God bless you. But he's working. The day you now ask for help, you have set a template. There are people today, if you ever see their text, they are begging. The moment the need is met, they forget the relationships. Until the day a need arises, Uncle, it's me again, no, it's Junior. Say, hey, I know you are Junior, what is the issue? Say, Uncle, you know I'm in, I'm in 400 level now, honestly. I say, are you the first to be there? You are matured enough to start working. Uncle, we are, we are traveling somewhere. We are going somewhere. And he says, don't be stupid. Don't you ever call my line again. 
most of you when you call your helpers this is what they tell you it's only when you have trouble that you call me anytime anybody tells you that you need to strengthen your relationship many of us have very bad relationship maintenance systems for as long i know many great people sadly some of them even great people i know they don't know how to keep relationships at all anytime you see their call one missed call two missed call they're in trouble they need a favor they need a help some of you are born again tongue talking but you are like that and you have closed doors closed doors your friend is celebrating a birthday you can never remember say i'm too busy are we together now your your whatever it is i'm too busy and Jimmy is my friend i love him and you know sometimes you see him and the wife and the two children of course um not everybody will have access to come and visit me that's the privilege of friendship nobody is born with intimacy by default you walk your way into it listen i am a busy person it is true there are many people who say apostle i've been trying to see you what what ordinance do i have to see you what covenant do i have with who to see you i've been trying to see you you are not attending to me that's a foolish statement you should ask yourself those who have unlimited access what are they doing that's the key in time past there were offices i tried to access i've shared with you my story years ago when i went to look for a loan i won't tell you the amount i went to look for a loan in a bank these people wasted my time and did all kinds of things and i found out i had brain capital but no relationship capital and i made up my mind some of us the fire is getting hotter by the day and you think the key is to get a job quickly find relationships do you know there are people who are not working but relationship is paying them salary every month until they get a job yes sir i know people like that my mother has a relationship with me forever my father has a relationship with me forever my siblings have relationships with me forever as i rise they rise it's called blessed by association listen once the easiest way to be rich is to find somebody building something great and invest quickly and help the person rise and as you rise chop i chop i'm teaching you listen there, you see the body of christ people there, there are many foolish people in the body of christ you watch people when they are starting you are the first to run your mouth i don't believe in them now you have access to them there are people years ago they had access to me they would have been some of the closest people to me today enjoying every blessing but they just saw it today now do you know the door you enter kicking your leg tomorrow you will feel a form so now that god gives you the opportunity there are people who use 50 naira to secure a relationship that is worth millions today that's wise investment the day that great man was looking for water you quickly carried your 50 naira the bible gives us a parable i don't have time in the bible where a man oh listen a man was about to be sacked by a king are we together and he knew he was in trouble he had been defrauding people a tax collector now they were going to throw him away do you know what he did he quickly called the people and said how much do you owe so so amount i reduce it for you ah and the moment they sat him he went back to them i scratch your back scratch my own too now this is a system that the world uses but believers don't know this koinonia is very connected to several people you see us connected to the military we are connected to the police we are connected to medical personnel we are connected to politicians because you rise through a network of relationships you don't know which it's not just about being selfish it's the way it happens relationships everybody shout relationships some of us if our parents knew this some of them their classmates today are the ministers in charge of abc no relationship to bless them is that true do you know there are people who sit down today and calls just come they call them one oh they are ah, promise where are you I'm, I'm trusting god for what come 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 there's 
create one committee that doesn't make sense and say sit down there you are the chairman in charge of it after, when god helps you after seven months they say okay that's all right it's dissolved just because you must be blessed ask mephibosheth how he paid for royalty relationships a man who was crippled are you learning what i'm ask the disciples how they became apostles relationship even when they ran away for three days when jesus resurrected they quickly apologized lord i'm sorry i'm still on your team and they became apostles are you hearing what i'm saying many of you right here you come for koinonia all the time and you have a a resentful attitude this brother you are not you are not my class you are not wearing my shoe rather than for you to sit down and say ah this brother is always taking notes god is taking him somewhere he may have one thousand two hundred naira one shoe one whatever but what is entering his spirit is programming him for greatness some of you resent every other person who is not you you are losing you are losing big time in life just this law alone will bless you i am i am i am a benefactor of relationships by the grace of god god has connected our ministry with all kinds of people oh, there is there is nothing at this level by the grace of god there is nobody within our sphere of influence that we want to meet that we cannot meet it's impossible somebody knows somebody do you know statistically they say you are four people away from anybody you want to meet four people four people there are others who will invite a guest minister in the capacity of his office and pay one million honorarium someone else because of relationship he said no 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 whatever you know i mean we are together i pray for you from the depth of my heart that the the power of relationships will show in your life from today please sit down many times you see an old woman carrying firewood on her head firewood that is as heavy as five men she puts it on her head walking the question i ask is where are her relationships this mama is 70 years she spent 70 years on earth and you cannot build a relationship with one successful person listen if you are up to 25 years hearing me and there is no one successful person in your life you are really failing hear what i'm saying you are really failing there is nobody to run to when things go bad there are people like that you are a pastor you want to hold a convention and you are stranded financially nobody in your circle of influence has reason to say please sir cover my shame for me relationships cover your shame relationships cover your shame who is standing in for you who is helping you rise you go to an oil company holding your certificate and you knock at the gate and the gate man says yes say I, I prayed and god led me to come and submit my cv he says bring it as he collects it he throws it inside a dustbin and you go back rejoicing and keep seeing visions of yourself working in an oil company till you are past the age that they will receive you because there's no relationship another unbeliever let me tell you this and i say this sincerely this is one secret that muslims have relationships relationships you will hardly see a muslim child go somewhere that his father cannot create that's why some of course I, I i love them we love muslims and all of that and you find out that there are some of them you see them in your schools they, they are not even serious because they know that relationship has already had they had the degree before they started so this is just a ceremony for all of that to happen because relationship has created a degree somewhere there is a space that has been created since they were in 200 level waiting for them to occupy but believers don't have that wisdom i show you the life of god versus the principles of god Are we together?
there is no day in my life that relationship does not bless me there is no day i say it may god forgive me if i'm lying but it's true there is no day in my life that relationship does not bless me you cook by yourself you wash your clothes by yourself you intercede for yourself no relationship nobody seen anything about you to pray for you by yourself you are looking for favor by yourself they drive you alone you walk alone you counsel yourself you motivate Abba. say relationships say the law of relationships i made a statement years ago and i repeat it every once and again that we will all be great right and the greater part is that we will all know ourselves praise god sorry about that some of you here um will never have any helper do you know why you are anti-friendship your persona is anti-friendship you are resentful you are rude you are callous you are very very offensive in your approach turn and tell one another good evening and somebody turns and you are looking at the person you are not my class stop that oh listen he that wants friends must first show himself humble yourself in this training ground where nobody knows who is who it's only god that knows whose destiny you see me hug people here some of you see me hug our little children and you think that uh, i'm just hugging them i will continue to hug them because at their age you were not thinking like them that means most likely they will be better than us at age 12 some of us were absolutely foolish these children at age 12 pray in tongues love god join prayer department some of them i mean look at a destiny like an arrow and you are missing an opportunity to invest you now come when it's too late when the person has become a big man do you know there are people who call my phone all the time sending insults and saying apostle uh, whatever it is they call you you are claiming you don't know me i say i don't know you i don't know you i don't know you don't bully me i don't know you listen when you celebrate a great man when he's great it's too late mm. you came way too late you don't celebrate greatness when greatness manifests you celebrate greatness in the process you participate in it that's why i'm excited for you because i have the privilege of participating in your success how in the world can i fail listen with all humility there are people today by the grace of god that i have raised who will never allow me beg for bread till jesus comes even if i decide to be careless and i i stop obeying any law of lifting you have sat down on on a you know how they do what they call it uh, um, let me not talk business here all those uh, businesses that you do you sit down you bring somebody and you keep rising that's how you can sit on a chair and keep rising like that forever because you paid the price to build someone are you hearing what i'm saying now question whose destiny are you investing in today question who will remember you when he gets to the throne if you are not there when i'm in the cave don't expect to be there when i'm on the throne if you were not there when i was on the cave don't expect to be featured there are, there are many lousy people in the body of christ with an entitlement mentality you hear them say i knew you i knew where you were not in what did you do about it when i was walking my way when i was hungry did you ever give me water you were part of those grumbling and talking and now that rejected stone has become the chief cornerstone you are now seeing the man of god in glory and power and you are saying we are colleagues we are not colleagues no sir listen be careful and don't let men bully you with their complacency and their inability to invest in your relationship anybody who does not think you are worth a good relationship should not be found in your future there are people listen i'm rounding up there are some of you many people who would have lifted you look at you now and they think you are failures because of what is happening they
they gist about you sometimes you hear it sometimes they say it to your face but they don't know what it is that is happening and then when you rise you see them come with entitlement mentality you should give me a house you should give me a car and you ask them why they say because i knew you before no sir everybody who believed in me when i was nothing is impossible for them to fail in life because they took a risk by believing in someone they never saw any result and now their risk is yielding dividends so it is not wickedness when you see somebody bless somebody there are people in my life no matter how foolish and stupid they become i'm bound to them forever because they believed in me when i was nothing rejoice not over me my enemies for though i fall yet i will rise again are you hearing what i'm saying some of you in the whole of your family nobody believes in you they've told you to your face you will not amount to anything obey these laws and watch god shock every one of them to their knees apostle i want to be blessed what are you doing i just need hundred thousand to start a business who fooled you that that's all it takes to succeed you see that you have two tiers of rice in your house it can pay for a growing relationship you can cook food invite five of your friends and say look just to honor you guys i know that i don't have much now but i just love you after 10 years they will tell you remember that our rice now enter this five-star hotel let's now eat my own version of the rice and someone looks at you listen someone looks at say and say you you shouldn't be in the palace you say i paid for it since i paid for the palace when i could afford it i show you wisdom keys that men are using to climb ladders of greatness so you can see somebody in the future come you see somebody in the future no charisma no anointing yet favor will never stop leaving him everybody knows him we're about leaving be that today and a man of god who also came for administration the man of god came for administration i was about to enter the car let's go and then um the protocol stopped me and said please i need to attend to him i turned to him and i said hello sir i don't know you he said sir you don't need to know me i came for administration and i had you were around i stopped the guy was holding a seat in his hand say relationships there are people who will be talking who should we lift here and somebody will say please i have one daughter I have one son not my biological child but this child is so well well mannered very lovely person the person did not read this course but that person has character and say send for that person quickly you see people who read something that has no business with what they are doing yet they keep rising to be directors relationships keep promoting them tonight we are going to pray I will stop here no one will continue the remaining next week there are plenty laws i will share with you the easiest way to succeed is to invest in relationships relationship is a stream of income when you are writing all your streams of income write relationships it will cost you now because under relationships you don't sell anything you give for free sometimes you need to be a fool investing in relationships some of you after this meeting you need to go and sit down and say lord who are the five most valuable people in my life and start calling them sometimes you don't even need five you just need one and say sir do you know there are people in my life who send credit all the time they don't have much it may be hundred naira. i'm not saying you should do it but i see the passion they are making to establish a relationship with me Billy Graham we talk about Billy Graham as the great evangelist do you know one of the reasons why he was great he had endorsements of every president before that happened it was said every time Billy Graham would write letters to members of parliament and the president of the United States wanting meeting with them they would throw away the letter he kept doing it and one day just one person attended to him a day will come the door will open don't think you will knock once and it will open you see the thing about relationship is that because of what you are looking for sometimes it will have to sting your ego don't be embarrassed pay the price that's the price for the value you are looking for
i see a number of men of god sometimes they want to see me maybe for a meeting and they come once twice and say please what is the big deal about this one please we are all equal before god and i say what an unwise person i have pursued men with anointings i have humbled myself i have stayed for weeks and months just to encounter people and the encounter was not more than two minutes because of value i have pursued uncommon mentors i have spent money i have sown seeds i still sow seeds into the lives of people to maintain relationship what have you done that you are complaining there are people just to stand after service and be patient everybody's pulling their mouth it's too late apostle i need to see you specially um um and i say look look I, I may not have all the time and then you see them frowning Abba, let's respect value no great man needs you you are the one who needs him so you must pay the price pay the price when i meet people who have what i look for i don't go as apostle joshua selman if it means me sweeping the office you've had my testimony of when i wanted to take a trip to the u.s to go and scrub the toilets of charles and francis hunter i was not going there as colleagues i wanted to go and scrub their toilets for two weeks it pained me when they died and i didn't meet them relationships how do you travel to u.s to go and scrub toilet if can you snap yourself scrubbing toilet and put on facebook and say it is the lord's doing most people who don't understand this will say look at how this person is disgracing himself never be embarrassed to invest in quality destiny relationships there are useless relationships that are going nowhere caught them this night i release the grace on you there are people who are going nowhere and they are forcing you you come around them you don't love god you don't think you don't plan you don't do nothing and they say two weeks you've not leave them all love is a command relationship is not choose your friends it is within your power if you are not going where i'm going i love you but you have to stay we can greet in church we can greet around but you cannot be my destiny friend not having my convictions a man who has to make you change your conviction in his presence is not a destiny friend leave them who are you believing in right now that you have not seen anything in their life who are you believing right now some of these people some of them are outside they may be sitting smelly clothes they can't afford perfume torn clothes but they are receiving you can reject them because of the privilege that you have and tomorrow you did not know that that was your governor you were kicking away oh jerusalem jerusalem you did not know your time of visitation your time came and you allowed it to pass you we are going to cry to god tonight father i want to engage the law of relationships stand up please pray rise up on your feet i'd like you to thank god for this message we just started introducing it tonight lift your hands and thank god open your mouth and say god thank you you are revealing to me the keys you are revealing to me the keys forever you will be the lamb upon the throne i gladly bow my knees sing it unto the lord it's not a special number Forever you will be Forever you will be Forever you will be The Lamb upon the throne You're the Lamb upon the throne Upon the throne And let it bow my knees And let it bow my knees 
minute can you just just pray talk to the lord and say lord i'm very serious with you this business of kingdom life i take it seriously for those of you who are not serious with him tell him lord tonight you have my heart whether you are a pastor you are a pope you are a bishop pray talk to the lord his presence is in this place tell him lord i'm serious i don't plan to be serious for just two years or until my husband or wife comes or until i'm ordained a pastor or until i have a parish <laughs> come on pray and say lord even if you stop answering my prayers i cannot leave you if you stop blessing me i cannot leave you make sure you are praying lord if you strip off the anointing for my life i will still follow you i love you more than anointing i love you more than ministry if no one else comes for koinonia i will still love you i will still serve you i will still pour out my heart and my all this is part of koinonia the message has begun make a commitment the lord will honor the commitment that you're making for many of you he's replacing the heart of stone with a heart of flesh where the things of the kingdom no longer become a burden lord you have my heart this is for sure you have my heart you have my heart you have my life you have my life everything 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 the skill the grace the wisdom still praying pray don't open your eyes and looking at your neighbor none of your business with what he's saying just focus just focus and pray don't be looking at me or your neighbor make sure you are talking if you don't know what to say keep quiet Yes, this is how generals are made. You will remember this commitment because he will remind you in the future. When you become a millionaire, he will remind you. When you are having one million man crusade, he will remind you. I assure you. When you are about to collect that bribe, he will remind you. When you are about to give yourself to serve Baal, he will remind you. I assure you, you will not forget this commitment. It all belongs to you. Oh, it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh, it all belongs to you. It all belongs to you. You're dedicating your life. Oh, it all belongs to you. Everything belongs to you. It all belongs to you. Oh, Oh, 
this is a kind of Christianity that was practiced by the apostles unconditional Christianity not God give me a car and I will love you not buy me a bicycle and I'll become your servant that is a doctrine that came from the pit of hell and Lord I know you will bless me but I love you more than the blessing it all belongs to you the kind of people that will walk in the new wine of the spirit these are the kinds of people that will walk in the levels of grace of prosperity of power of influence men who have surrendered their hearts not just their hands who have surrendered their gifting have committed their all say Lord make me the celebrity and I will not be ashamed to declare your praises that you will not get to the point where the stupidity and the foolishness of honor that turns the great to become weak but you say Lord I love you and as I rise, I will lift your name. He said, and if I be lifted up, not you, not the apostolic ministry, not ENI, not Koinonia, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men. If your gifts lift him up, if your anointing lift him up, if you consciously hide yourself behind his cross, it does not happen automatically you must consciously keep yourself he said i keep my body under me say lord i desire that you alone be lifted hallelujah hallelujah blessed be the name of the lord that we be grounded that we be built that we be established in righteousness enough of that kind of Christianity where in a crowd and a multitude of people only less than 10 people are serious with God and that becomes the pride of the pastor it's time we begin to shout until the least among us become as great as David. Where every one of us can stand by himself and legislate on behalf of the parliament of heaven. Where every one of us can stand for truth and be a voice that declares the word of the Lord in every area of ministry and life that God will find an ambassador in you. This is our mandate. And we can change this country. We can change the continent of Africa. And we will. Because there is an ability beyond us. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Now, please look up everybody. How many of you are being blessed and changed by Koinonia in all sincerity? The day we stop ministering the word to you, God has a right to seize ministry from us. Because from that time, we become showmen and actors on stage. Hallelujah. Let me show you something. Ephesians 
chapter 2. I hope that one day when you become a pastor, look at me. When you become a pastor in future and you make slavery out of your members, we will call you and we'll ask you where you learned it from. Hallelujah. The reason why we are careful with our lives many times is so that we do not sow the seed of bondage and corruption in the hearts of many people. And so we allow death to walk in us so that life will walk in you. Hallelujah. Paul said, follow me as I follow after Christ. Run away from all this wrong concept of ministry and concept of glory where you dominate your fellow man in a bit to show you are great. The greatest in the kingdom is a servant. Humility is a revelation. It's not an act. There is a revelation that keeps you in that state. Hallelujah. Away with that ambition of lording it over people. And have, I fear people that serve me. I've said this thing for years. Till today, I'm not able to call people sons and daughters. Because I know how of much of a baby I am in the presence of God. And so what is the extent of grace that will make me call someone a son or a daughter? And I run away from these kinds of things. Because I know that anybody that assumes a position of honor will be judged even more. Make sure your priorities are defined about life about leadership about ministry kill away the wrong mindsets that we have received where you lord it over people that's not the way of the spirit when the spirit of god finds expression in the life of a man if all you have to show for your yieldedness is that you can blow and people fall down you are still a baby in the spirit hallelujah we must be built and be matured. Men of character, men of grace, men of humility. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. All right, let me have, um, please, as I make these calls, if you belong to this category, just run out quickly. I will embarrass you. Let me have someone that knows God is calling him in the place of ministry, just one person. One, God is calling you in the place of music. Come out quickly as I'm calling. Just if you are bold and you are confident, if you are thinking about it, just remain there. One person, you are what? Music. Do you sing? But in your other shirt, you should leave only one. Dress properly. Hallelujah. What of you? Music. Hold on. I just need, come. I'm not praying. We are doing something. How, okay. Um, music all of you okay don't worry just just go back to your seat appreciate them please i just need one person music okay let's have two of you someone in fashion and design fashion and design quickly who will make sure it's what you are doing not dreaming about yet at least that you have a seed on ground make sure when you come out here you dress properly don't dress like a hooligan dress like a leader right don't come out with with comb in your pocket and you're laughing no you're, you dress like you know where you are going don't look like a foolish person it's touts that look like that hallelujah you comb your hair you look smart you look like where you are going don't dress like a thief that's why they keep stopping you on the road hallelujah all right let's have someone in education education someone who is education anybody you know god is calling in the area of education please appreciate them as they come someone in family life you know you have a passion family life who is that education family life who is represent okay i will too appreciate her Someone in politics and governance, you know that there is grace for you in that area. Make sure you know what you are standing for. If you are not sure, please go back to your seat. Hallelujah. Please come up and face the congregation, all of you. 
uh, someone in arts and entertainment fashion you're a beauty you are a beauty uh, what do we call it makeup artist beautician where are you oh she looks it no problem just come up you're a pastor why are you laughing you people always think come on pastor beautiful one more person come on celebrate her i like people who are bold and confident hallelujah all right so just group yourself fashion beauty this side next music next your what decoration education two of you beautiful please stand family life politics and governance hallelujah all of you are 10 coin on here right hallelujah okay um sweetheart come now you are a pastor walking in grace you've attended our miracle services right and you've seen the grace of god and as a christian who has been built you have the opportunity to talk in a bereavement now you walk in miracles you walk in signs and wonders but a family has lost their loved one and they just push you as you are now all right with the knowledge of what we have been training the building and everything how would you approach how would you communicate the light of christ and comfort the family make your mistakes don't be afraid this is a training ground nobody i assure you listen nobody will look at you and speak whatever you can i'm comforting you here i'm standing by your side okay all right go ahead praise the lord praise the living god are there living souls here praise 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 the living god Hallelujah. amen well to me i'll go to such family because you know life without jesus if that family are not from are not maybe let me say they don't know much about christ because you cannot just go into a family and just start you understand if they don't know about christ you first preach christ to them praise the lord and also you cannot do it by your own power you need god praise the living god before you go and meet any family you need to go on your knees not only on your knees you need to go to god god i want to go to that family what do you want me to say how do you want me to comfort them praise the living god Hallelujah. and with the help of god you see that god will give you words to say praise god god bless you come on please appreciate her yes we are proud of you you're learning very well hallelujah that's the life of a minister you never do things without the leadership of the holy spirit that's all i was looking for this is what we are teaching you are you following me now how many of you like koinonia 101 no carryover no carryover whatsoever hallelujah so that you'll be established when you step out you should know that you have been trained when you graduate from ab you behave like an abu site and you know you are smart you cannot graduate from abu and behave as if you did not go to school hallelujah so when you are going to a buried family, you don't just go arrogantly and go and meet them and say, do you know that we attend miracle service and we are all these kind of things, you are behaving like a child here. If you don't know what to say, what do you do? Keep quiet. There is wisdom in silence. I told you to read the book of Proverbs. The moment you are in the midst of people, especially elderly people, and you don't know what to say, shut your mouth. That's what Elihu did until wisdom came unto him hallelujah politics and governance come sir we live in a very corrupt country hallelujah where every tom dick and harry has access to a part of the national treasury anybody can loot hallelujah and now you become the chairman of a local government there's subvention there's allocation yeah? there's there's everything for you and now we have taught you to represent Christ. Assuming you have to address your leaders.
Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, free thinkers, wicked people, demons, all kinds of people. And now you are supposed to communicate the life of Christ. You have been receiving the teachings here. Listen, if you cannot translate the word that you are receiving here into a practical reality, we have been wasting our time. Hallelujah. Go ahead, sir. Feel free. Express yourself. Praise God. Two minutes. In a country like Nigeria where there is high level of incubation of um, corruption, I, as one, pardon the whole um, pattern of um, bureaucracy and so on and so forth, but there's a need for strategic planning. We saw that in the life of Jesus Christ where he was able to coordinate his disciples in assigning um, respective assignments to them um, all around, you know, and in the same regard, you being able to contend with um, society is another aspect which you need to put into consideration which Jesus Christ continually was um, faced with um, challenges from the Sadducees and the Pharisees but consistently the application of wisdom which of course didn't just come um, naturally but he prayed and actually wisdom was then granted unto him he was commissioned into his assignment and so the same will I do Amen Okay, so you have not told us what you are going to tell them. So, assuming you are addressing a group of people, what give us one solution that can help to bring good governance in this country? We are tired of nonsense. Speak to us. Good governance is an active role in key participation. Everybody has, um, based on the... From a kingdom perspective, not social studies. <laughs> All right. From a kingdom perspective participation one major aspect which we need to do is actually not looking at the importance of any office but actually operating with a mindset of humility you just said not quite long ago humility is a revelation it is not um, an understanding Amen. hallelujah and so as a Christian when you go into public office it's not for you the waiting day for all you have to chop they have they have chopped their own no as a Christian you must go with the attitude of servanthood your blessing is tied to the operation of the economy of the kingdom not in looting from the treasury hallelujah and you face a lot of challenges because there are people above you but you must refuse to compromise don't go and steal money and come and lie to us in the church and carry small and say joshua selman this is for you to go on air we will drive you away with it that's why we are believing the word of god for ourselves hallelujah so when we vote you sir make sure you represent christ now i can talk to you but when you get there when you forget one night you will dream of koinonia and you will dream of this warning god will threaten you and say mr man he will do to you what he did to adeboe the day you mess up i will erase you from the ground we are proud of you go and represent the kingdom family life <laughs> hallelujah marriage right now is a union between two things anything a man and a whale a fish and and, and 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 anything a man and a baby i've said it again if you are considering marriage it is paramount that the partner you are thinking about must be of the opposite sex hallelujah it's amazing that the senate in nigeria can be debating gay marriage a man and a man a woman and a woman we call it human rights and that westernization and that nonsense is creeping through films is there anybody in media here no media media come on we cannot move without the media who is there we need one person from the media quickly all right family life ma now you are supposed to talk sense into family there's all kinds of things going on a man believes the wife is his slave the wife believes the man is whatever everybody comes with every how do you approach from a kingdom perspective what do you think is the solution to restoring discipline and godliness in america a child is 14 years old the mother says sit down here say i'm gonna see you to cut 
and the child slaps his mother and we call it human rights isn't it and when you get a cane and whip the child we call it all kinds of names I don't plan to beat my children but I plan to discipline them <laughs> praise the Lord um, the Bible says that now we have a more sure word of prophecy and we have the Bible to always go back to praise the Lord and um, as Monroe said that when a purpose of a thing is not known abuse is inevitable so in the family everybody has his or her place hallelujah the father the priest of the home and then the mother and all that and um, i know women lately there have been um women trying to um is it campaign for their place for their right hallelujah but from the scripture it's it's um obvious where the place of the woman is where the place of the man is the children and all that so um what i would do as a person of course seeking having sought for the leadership of the holy spirit is to um, bring to the consciousness of the people your place hallelujah as a child as a father as a mother hallelujah and then to trust the holy spirit to lead us hallelujah amen bless you beautiful how many of you are proud of the people this is just a random sampling it's a true proof of whether we are making progress or not hallelujah praise the lord media in five minutes a nation can become become drug addicts or, or because a celebrity went on air he was allowed to go on channel o or mtv right and you see all kinds of things and now we have on youtube ipad everything you can i mean you just need to go on youtube there's everything free pornography how to shoot guns how to kill people now god is sending you to the media you're an apostle to the media what do you think you can do or how do you plan to approach to bring the kingdom thank god for tv stations Christian TV stations. I think you should appreciate every ministry and every servant of God around the world that has a TV station. It's a breath of fresh air in this jungle of Babylon. Every channel you tune into, there are lies. The media, people tell lies. They are manipulated by government. If God gives you a television ministry, will you let me be on your TV ministry? Most definitely, sir. Uh, because you're my teacher. And the, the, main, the main reason why they, every being was created is to give glory unto God. And every invention of man is an extension of the creation of God. So if the media was created by man, it means that the purpose of the media is to bring glory to God. And if it's not glorifying God, then the purpose of it has been defeated. So most definitely, if I get to own a television station, when I get to own a television station, thank you, sir. It, it, the Bible would be the only law that is followed. If it is out of the scriptures, then it is not existing. Hold on. I hope you know that right now on TV stations, many TV stations, you can't say Jesus. Even God is becoming an issue. You must say divine or just something or highest. Something in the highest. Whatever it is. Paper, UFOs, whatever in the highest. So how do you plan to come in bluntly? Do you plan to be very blunt about Jesus Christ? Extremely First blunt. of all, so that we'll know now whether we need to talk to you or... I am extremely blunt about Jesus Christ. And it will be replicated in every institution that is established, that the Lord used me to establish. If we can't say the name of Jesus Christ on air, then there is no business being in the business of media. Because Jesus is the person that we're looking up to. He's the being. He's the most divine thing. He's the creator of the universe. He's the creator of the person that created media. So most definitely, if we cannot revile him on air, then we have no business being on air. So Jesus would be the yardstick for every single thing. For an advert to come on air, 
we must first check it what is the implication of this advert on people there are theories that guide the media and these theories have one of the most popular theories in the media is the magic bullet theory that tells you that the media has the power to act exactly the way a bullet pointed at a human being will act that once it shoots you it takes effect immediately uh, that meaning that it has a way of reforming your mindset it has a way of transforming your mindset so we must look at every single content from that perspective is this television program how is it going to affect the people positively or negatively teaching our people how to prepare for war will it affect them positively or negatively showing a news that of something that's happened uh, in somewhere will it affect the people positively or negatively accepting some musical videos will it affect the people positively or negatively if it does not affect the people positively then it cannot go on air because if it does not affect the people positively then it means that it is definitely going to be destroying lives it's going to be, it's not only going to be destroying the immediate life that you're seeing but it's going to be destroying generations to come because it's what you have learned today that your seed will replicate so if it is not in the scripture it is not going to be on air yeah. hallelujah this is powerful hallelujah let me tell you something these guys will do what they are talking about they are not pretending it and i like his competence you see him now so you can talk to a group of unbelievers who are media people so we are not just training you to pray in tongues alone there is a place of creativity there is a place of digging deep you know where god is calling you to begin to build and prepare i never knew there was a theory that governs media but this is smart you are learning something right now hallelujah don't just be spiritually braced up you must be competent enough to invade the cosmos and bring intelligent presentation of the kingdom how many of you know ravi zacharias one intelligent apologetic he stood and preached before atheists and all kinds of people communicating the wisdom of the word hallelujah education we have all kinds of people, students being victimized. University of Abuja, they've asked the students to go and relocate. You can imagine, after spending years of work because of the corruption of the administration, those in final year will have to go and start scouting for universities to start again. This is the recent announcement. Allocations that are sent to the educational sector don't reach. Everybody chops his own, NUC gets his own, everybody gets his own. There's project from educational tax fund to build universities build roads build all of these things and they are not being effective after five years they build and say 1999 project they do it in 2005 so how do you if you become the vice chancellor of amadubello university in 2000 and what do what don't you like today that you think you can change quickly one minute praise the lord firstly the bible says he who lacks wisdom, let him ask of the Lord who give it liberally. That's the first thing. So if I'm the vice -chanc chancellor, I would like all students to know that as, as children of God, we are ambassadors of heaven. That's the first thing. We are ambassadors of heaven, which means that we are representing God. So everybody, as long as you ask for the course you want to read in your field, God is sending you there to effect a change, definitely. And God is a God of, he, he, has, he plans his things right before time. So he has sent before you. So if you ask definitely of, if we ask definitely of God, he has sent us to effect a change. So if I was a VC and um, of ABU or whichever school, the first thing I will do, the very first thing I will do is to bring up programs not only education line because nowadays i found out that okay, for example for example last week i was opportunity to be on a particular program okay a particular program i'm going to bring up is an idea 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 challenge program something that can boost up um, students iq so that in the nearest future they can actually stand on their own and do something independent on their on their own with god 
So that's what I'm going to do. Are you going to increase lecturer salary? <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you. Education too. What do you have to say? 20 seconds. Amen. Uh, well, mine will go to the parts of the students. Because seriously, I think what is eating deep into our educational sector these days is laziness on the part of the students. That is, we rely on examination my, pra my practice. I think that is what that is what pains me most in the part of become, education. If you become the, 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 what do they call, the rector of JAM. Well, as the, if, when I become the rector of JAM, I will definitely look for the right ways. But I think being the rector of JAM is really going too far. I'm looking at it in a, in a place whereby before the students come to write exams, who are they actually? Because whatever jam have in place it is actually what a student actually is that he goes to do because jam have brought up so many innovations but exam my practice is the more they bring up new innovations the more people devise ways so we have to look for a way that to, to make students know that they can do it on their own because what we have now is students who don't really believe in themselves we believe that you see people come and pray 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 and at the end of the day you go to the exam hall after reading that you still go what was your prayer for in the first place? If you really pray and believe that God is going to answer your prayer, I don't believe we should still go into exam. So I'm looking at it in a personal way. As a student, look at it that you can do it with the help of God. If you can pray to God and read your books, you can do it on your own. Hallelujah. Powerful. So when, when you get into the educational sector, organize programs that encourage students. All right? Organize programs that encourage students on billboards of schools instead of writing Socrates, say, write, you can make it, you can believe it. Draw the student in every faculty, draw students receiving their convocation certificate before they step into their lecture theaters. That's what they are seeing, they will become what they are seeing. Hallelujah! That's how to apply scripture. Music, come, music, we've had people deceive us in church we sponsored them they went on air they produced album we bought it marketed it for them only for them to go on air and then sign up with something we don't understand they started reducing jesus to god god to divine divine to you you to her her to queen queen to princess princess to us are you aware of the challenge that you have to face in the music industry what's your resolve praise god um, one thing is this you don't do music because you see others excel in music you do music because it's a calling it's a gift and one thing we need to realize is that you can't give what you don't have for you to give life you need to have life for you to minister anointing you need to have anointing you need to be grinded in the word of god music is not what will come outside and just start shouting you can even you with a rough voice you can minister anointing to people your private time we should have quality time with god in our private in our privacy you need to give what you have not just come and make sure of your voice and your 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 vocal prowess to to minister life you need to have life and the word of god should be taken seriously god should be our inspiration hallelujah have you written any song Name two Christian gospel artists in Nigeria that you know. Samsung. Frank Edward. God bless you. Appreciate him, please. Please go back. If you tell us you are called into ministry and we tell you name two gospel ministers and, and you are chewing your mouth, we will not castigate you but we will tell you go and sit down. Right? Then you pass paper and say I want to minister in Koinonia. We say no. Go and sit down. Work on yourself first. Hallelujah. Stand out. Okay. 
Praise the Lord. Came to realize that in our today's world, there are many souls are dying. There is someone that God wants to use to pull children to the kingdom of God. I want to take the example of Michael Jackson, the king of pop. If Michael Jackson should be a child of God, the crowd, he has moved proud to the world. But if that person is, a, is safe and he has pulled this crowd, all of them will make it to heaven. So when he died and I saw the crowd that are coming to him for his burial, it was a challenge to me. I said, this one, if it is for God now, what will happen? Could have been a great soul winner. Praise the Lord. Now when I was told that, Sarah, you are called to sing. And I say, God, can I sing? I don't know how to sing, but I may have people sing you for your glory. And I don't know anything about music, but I submit. And anytime I stand and I handle the mic, I see the power of God moving. And I say, Lord, connect me to the people that will try me so that when I come out, when you announce me, that voice, that the people that are waiting for me, that unsafe soul that are waiting for me, will come and bow down before it through my administration in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. Two music schools for you. Steve Strings has his music school. Ruben has his music school. Go and meet him. You will talk with him. He will train you. He's very gifted in that area. Go and meet him now. Hallelujah. Fashion. Who is? Okay, we'll soon round up. There is, there is the reason why I'm doing what I'm doing. Hallelujah. Fashion. Ah! Right now in the world, every day, Versace, Gucci, um, Boss, everybody is bringing up everything. Huh? All kinds of perfumes, all kinds of things. All right? And uh, we have everybody, all kinds. Right now, you see naked ladies on perfumes that are for men. I mean, completely naked. And, you know, all kinds of things. So how do we... By the way, let me tell you something. For music guys, do you realize that when Michael Jackson died, in three days... The album that he was supposed to use for his tour sold 120 million dollars in three days after his death. People went to buy it. So music brings you to a position where you are an influence over people. That's the right time to communicate Christ. Hallelujah. So fashion. We have fashion parade, tarabangs, all of the people. How do you plan to compete with those world-class people? They are very good. They are very competent they are not small at all. All they are Brazilian, we've won all, all of these things. How do you plan to come in with it? Hmm? They are Mary Kay, they are Gucci Rush. Hallelujah. As a good designer, you must have to go out, seek. Kingdom perspective. How do you plan to be invaded? Not how do you plan to do the job. Just how do you plan to let Jesus come? Okay, through that, you must have to be careful. There are some perfumes that you must have to be careful when you are putting it. You understand? You must have to be... Let him talk. What is your business? I asked you to come out. You didn't come out. You must have to be very careful because in every aspect of this life, you bring out fashions. There are some fashions that they are evil. You understand? So, spiritually, you must have to say no for that. that let, I'm just assuming. This, this is a shirt. Isn't it? I wear this shirt today. You don't know how it comes. It's coming about that. And you go out looking for it. No, without knowing that this shirt is from maybe from evil uh, 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 spirits. You, you begin to go and buy it. So you must have to be very careful. Spiritually. Allow the spirit to lead you in every fashion that you are wearing or you are putting. Like so many girls, they are backsliding. You will see their heads putting. Appreciate him. Come on, appreciate him. Encourage him. Hallelujah. Paul said, Anyone who is not against us is for us. Come on, appreciate him. God bless you, sir. Hallelujah. 
What's that? Boutique. Beauty, makeup artist. Education. Oh, both. Come. Makeup artists. Oh. Hallelujah. We'll give you one minute. I'm, I'm very serious about it. I'm, I'm a strange man of a person. Hallelujah. One minute. All right. How do you plan to make our sisters nice and beautiful? All right. Without causing the brothers to go to hell. <laughs> brothers, am I speaking? Am I speaking? Praise God. Praise the Lord. I will tr try by the grace of God to see that I make them up in such a way that to the glory of God, you make up to the glory of God and not to the glory of man. And just like I see it as a calling, I, I know it's not normal. It's not just a normal thing. Look good as in know the right thing to wear the right thing to put on even your lipstick should glorify god your eye pencil or whatever your powder should glorify god not the one you you put on and look like a masquerade praise god hallelujah in other words they are asking ladies how many percent of you is the real you Hallelujah. As we all know, essence of everything is bad. Um, you can always look beautiful. Um, doing your makeup lightly, not too, um, too bold. And when you are um, making up, you, you should go with what you're wearing. I, I like, like now, when you're applying pow powder or um, our foundation whatever it's okay as a, as as a christian makeup artist our advice that you make up lightly don't make it too shouty you still look beautiful the way praying in tongues makes you beautiful that's a big secret i'm telling you i know you will not agree That's a big secret. I'm telling you, if the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead lives in your mortal body, that same spirit will quicken, vitalize. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Um, I told some of my friends that sometimes when I get jobs and then you look at the people you're about to make up, you can't help but start praying hallelujah because sometimes you don't know where to start from again i'd like to say that trend changes but style is doesn't change at all so the best thing to do like she said is moderation hallelujah now the problem we have in the fashion world is that we ladies we don't want to wear what this this lady is wearing all of us we want to look different you know so to an extent we try to overdo things but the secret is just this Look 60% the trend and then 40% your own spice. Thank you. Hallelujah. Look, let me tell you something. Listen to me. Save yourself headache and don't die for nothing. Do the best you can and leave the rest of God. Don't kill yourself and say, I must look this. Must you do it? Who is complaining about how you're looking? See, there, there's pressure to be everything. I don't dress because this is the trend. Hallelujah. I dress when I like something, I wear it. You don't put me under pressure and say, this is how men of God, I don't know what they believe. I don't know what they are doing. Don't put yourself under pressure, especially ladies. Say, ah, this we've won is 5,000. You have 6,000, you are dying to use the 5,000 and fix it. Watch the one that you have and... and use it again who said you keep using it for the rest of your life is it only your roommates that will know hallelujah we put ourselves under all kinds of pressure blackberry you must use the blackberry you must use this if your phone does not have camera you are embarrassed 
you beg your friend to help you you are not an ambassador you have you look older than your age because if you keep doing that for years you you will look the stress will kill you appreciate all these people go back to your seat god bless you so together are we making progress hallelujah i didn't call these people because of a variety tonight hallelujah i called to test at a particular point when jesus was teaching he said 12 disciples come and he sent them he said let me know whether or not we are making sense and they came back he sent the 70 and the bible says they came back rejoicing and they said even the devils were subject to us in thy name hallelujah it's important for us to know that there is transformation and there is change happening in the life of everybody not everybody is going to be a pastor here true or false so our ministry is not just for pastors not everybody here is going to be a, an entrepreneur a business person not everybody maybe not everybody will even marry i didn't say god said it i said not everybody you can choose hallelujah but that whatever it is the bible says we are god's workmanship created in christ jesus that's what it means to be an ambassador an ambassador is the representative of a government if we if we just work on ministers alone what happens to the politicians that's why nigeria is suffering we have men of god we have no voice in our senate and the one or two that are there the voice of the world will strangle them to a point that they have no voice we don't want it to happen that way there is a strategy that god is giving us i follow me now i've said it here that the true apostolic ministry does not just train people it invades people and shifts cultures systems so whether it's steve strings or um or jimmy on air jimmy when we see you on exclusive to divinity or um al Heri doing our fashion whatever you know all of these things that we can see that christ is being directly before now the church has thought that the only way to train people is to just get them to pray get them to study the bible hallelujah and then have their nice and small house but there are policies being formed every day and we are suffering the consequences if we do not have voices that rise in these systems a time will come the church will be strangled are you listening to me in a place like zaria it's very difficult to give a church a land hallelujah there are many difficult ways so don't say it does not matter otherwise a time will come when certain policies will be put together do you know right now in which of the countries i don't know they officially permitted gay all right and not just gay but the gay can choose any church that they want to wed so they can come for koinonia now and say you must wed us and if you do not the government will seize your license you know it's only in nigeria that you can start ministry when you like abroad you there are there are ways you do it in, in, in you don't just do it whether you're a miracle worker or not are you following me now so you can imagine that that kind of thing don't say it cannot come to nigeria this is spiritual and if believers do not rise in that area if god does not have a voice we are in trouble hallelujah and this is what kingdom invasion is all about this is the principle that great men like sondia delaja used and they caused the orange revolution in ukraine a city that is a racist nation but he brought a revolution in that city and forever his name will be in the sands of time as a revivalist the church must become a platform for training and building believers must be able to come to church and not just get educated but get equipped and trained believers are not idiots we are intelligent people we are just spiritual that's all it doesn't mean we don't have common sense the church has taught believers to kill away your common sense that the way you love god is have no sense of reasoning again so the moment you step out of church you have no relevance to the system whatsoever 
we need believers that can have a voice both in the system jesus spoke to pharisees the government of the land he had something when he went to farmers and business people he could communicate to them he went to prostitutes and the outcasts he could relate with them jesus could relate with every strata of society he met the military people he had something to tell them he understood the law to the point that when caesar came he said give to caesar what belongs to caesar he understood the legal side of ministry Paul had this understanding. A time came, it was not his anointing that saved him. He said, look, let me tell you, I am a Jew. I was trained under Gamaliel, a Pharisee to the core. I understand these principles. Don't take it for granted that I'm preaching the cross. Doesn't mean I'm an idiot. I'm an intelligent scribe and Pharisee. And it saved him. By the way, let me tell you, Paul was not a tent maker. All right? Paul made prayer shawls, not tents. To add it to your Bible knowledge, Paul was not a tent maker. The translators made a mistake. His job was prayer shawls, not tents. Hallelujah. Do you believe that we are the revivalists that are going to shake this nation? Do you believe that we are the ones who will arise? Do you believe that above and beyond ABU, above and beyond Zaria, there is an international anointing upon your life. This is what God told me to do tonight. Do you believe that all these teachings on faith, we are teaching on faith, we are teaching on character, we are teaching on giving. You know, I've been so, I'm sure the ministers have been impressed by the turnout of Titus again and again and the way people are becoming obedient to the word of God. Hallelujah. We are teaching these things. Grooming, equipping. This is what it means to equip, to supply the tools that it takes to rule and to reign. I assure you, you will not regret what you are doing. Many of you will thank God that you pass by Zaria in your destiny. Hallelujah. We are God's workmanship. Say, I am his workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. I am absolutely confident. Listen to me. Listen to me. Do you know that seated among us here, if only God can open our eyes prophetically to see the caliber and the class of people who are seated here. Maybe you did not know that they will graduate such great generals. Today they celebrate generals all around. If they are known that all of these men today who are generals and world-renowned figures, this is how I've said something. I said this thing right from the days we used to meet at the back of um, at the back of, of chapel. I said we are going to be great in life, and the beautiful part is we will all know ourselves. We'll be related to one another. Hallelujah. Creating a kingdom community is the key to sustaining kingdom values. We are not wasting our time. This is not just church as usual. Oh, you jot and write, hallelujah, you get up. Uh -uh. That you leave koinonia with a resolve in your heart. Without this understanding, your Christianity becomes boring because you don't know what else to do when you are born again and filled with the Holy Spirit. We do not know that Christianity is not just a religion of servitude, but it's a call to responsibility where we can represent Christ. So you see that every time you are building, while you are in class, others just want to pass and go. You are conscious of the fact that I am an ambassador. So they are just doing malpractice. They are not even listening to what the lecturer is saying because they want to go. But you know that I am different. Hallelujah. When people are getting thorough, you are serious, you are buying books, you are building, you lock yourself, you are fasting like that gentleman for five days. Why will someone be fasting? Our media department just a week or two finished, I think, five or seven days fast. How can a media department be fasting? For what? To hold camera? But this is how much they see where they are going. Listen your comprehension of where god is taking you determines how much you are willing if you know you are going far it will not be a burden for you to prepare right now are you listening to me the way many of us are preparing we plan to end in zaria or to end in kaduna state or to end in the north 
I told myself something. I said, before my parents go to be with the Lord, they will know they gave birth to a son. Indeed. Hallelujah. Can your parents say that about you? Or they just look at you and when you are getting married, your father just look at you and say, thank God. Thank God. 29 years of misery. Thank God. We are his workmanship. I bring you a message. Very simple message tonight. That the Lord is counting on you. The Lord is counting on ambassadors and generals. Don't just grow up and get old. Realize that you have an assignment. Shout it. Say, I have an assignment. I have a mandate. I am not a non-entity. I am going somewhere to happen. Yes. Yes. I'm telling you. I know this about my life. I knew this years ago. And today by grace I have the privilege to teach. And talk to God's people. It's not a mistake. Hallelujah. Are you listening to me? Please Steve stand up. He was my roommate. We were roommates. Hallelujah. And what happened? Those times he used to bring keyboard. Room 155 old block. He would bring keyboard and I will be on the keyboard and he will be on the guitar. And then Andy, now Ambassage, who received a, a, one of the awards as, as, as the best gospel rapper. That was where we would worship. Then no koinonia, no apostle, who apostle can, no nothing. No money to buy any suits like this, no nothing. Nobody calling you sound, no nothing, but we believe. And Steve would play the guitar. I remember sometimes during our, our devotion in the morning, other people from other rooms would come because we would worship. I'll never forget the time we had a divine visitation. We were worshiping and we held our hands, three of us, and we prayed in tongues and there was such a dense presence of God. And that was how we lay down and slept there. The power of God. I remember those times I'll be sitting down and the power of God would come upon me so much and I'll just look for them and just be lay hands <laughs> those were days of practice we are still under practice but a higher level of practice who would have known he didn't have the name strings yet but today the grace of God has made him a voice around and everywhere you go to you save Steve strings people clap and some of you admire him and say oh dear just like many of you will stand five years from now and look at your congregations yes 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 you'll be married to the pastor and when you stand and see every kind of misbehavior you address it squarely and they ask you where did you learn this kind of thing from you say i remember there used to be one one big mouthed young guy like this in zaria that will not let us rest come you are walking and you are prophesying like this yeah there was one yellow guy and i saw the way you prophesy and every time you're making your congregation laugh and they say where did you learn it from come on tell me who you say was doing it yes this is where god is taking us steve strings i just brought him up to tell you and this is only the beginning I will not be surprised today if I see Steve Strings playing and you are watching KICC and you just start and say, tell me I'm dreaming. This is Steve. Don't say you are dreaming. You think he's playing. Or one day suddenly you have been praying that I won't go on air. I will go one day. <laughs> Let me assure you. I know many of you are praying and say, Kai, oh God, please, all these kind of people, don't go. I will go. God will take me there. And you will be part of the partners. Because God will speak to you and you are promised to be obedient. Hallelujah. I believe what I'm saying with the whole of my heart. This is not the end of ENI. This is not the end of Koinonia. This is just a step out of the cave compared to where we are going. 
for your life i may not know you by name listen to me you are lost in the crowd sitting here that was how i used to sit down years ago when men of god are preaching i'll be in fcs sitting quietly and men of god will come and preach See, some of you the grace of god is upon your life and lost in that crowd and today by grace this is how some of you by grace will be called out this is how some of you will stand some of you will be the dangotes and the otedolas and they'll be asking you to say how come nigeria is booming in agriculture like this and you say there is one called the holy spirit the holy spirit as a businessman you say yes yes you not just say god those of you who said god here yeah, i hope you know the god you are talking about i believe this with all my heart this is what we are striving after some of you are seated here you will have ministries you will be the next benny hymns you know i'm not lying the spirit of god tells you that what this guy is saying is not a lie some of you women will move in strange anointings you will move in the anointings of catherine kuman the anointings of amphi mcpherson madam gunion maria woodward eater you will bring revival in this nation i know it we are going to pray just for five or ten minutes and then we are done this is my message tonight i kept thinking about this all through and i was wondering i said lord you really want me to do this and the lord said yes we are going to rededicate ourselves and say lord here is my life here is my life here is my life here is my life i want to give in serving my fellow man doing the will of god here is my life here is my life here is my life i cannot wait i cannot wait here is my life I want to give, I want to give in serving my fellow man, doing the will of God. Here is my life. Here is my life. Here is my life. Rise up on your feet. Here is my life. Here is my life. Come on, sing. Here is my life. Here is my life. Here is my life. Go ahead and begin to pray and say, Lord, here is my life. Pray. Say, Lord, I'm the one Joshua Selman has been talking about. You will commit great ministries to the nation. You will commit anointings into my hands. You will commit grace. Pray. Say, Lord, you are talking about me tonight. Here is my life. Pray. Kingdom invasion. Invading the cosmos. I am God's workmanship. Created in Christ Jesus. Bible says, you are a royal priesthood. You are an holy nation, a peculiar people, called to show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Pray, say, Lord, I will change my sphere of influence wherever you are sending me to. Pray, here is my life. Train me. Let the wisdom of Bezalel come. Let the anointing of Ezekiel come. Let the prosperity of Solomon come. Let the leadership of Joseph come. Pray. Let the grace of Esther come. Let the favor of Jesus come. Let the anointing of Paul come. Let the prophetic dimension of Agabus come. Pray.
Let the evangelistic grace of Philip come. I receive grace. Hallelujah. Listen. Now we are going to pray. Every call of an ambassador, write it, is a call unto responsibility. And responsibility entails preparation. Preparation entails sacrifice. Every call of an ambassador, you are not at your best yet. No matter how great you are. I'm speaking to generals tonight. You are not at your best yet. You know how to weave. Why are you stopping there? You know how to make hair. Why are you stopping there? Every time, let me teach you something. Every time, go on your knees before God and pray on your giftings and pray on your skill. Say, Lord, let an anointing come upon it. If you are going to have the next McDonald's, say, Lord, there will be an anointing. It will be a platform to heal the sick. That your eatery will be known as a miracle center. Hungry people will come and eat and live with more than just satisfaction. There's a song Alvin Slaughter sang. He said, what's that you have in your hands? I can use it. Only if you are willing to lose it. I learned it from Jang Fa. Years ago it was his song. He liked it. I tried to learn it from him. I, I just couldn't get it. He said, I'll take the little that you have and make it brand new why because i am el shaddai tonight can you submit your giftings and say lord it may not be much but it can change nations lift your hands and say lord i surrender my giftings and my skill it may not be much i may just know how to set sound but lord take it tonight use it for your glory anoint it i know i don't have a voice i'm a shy person but breathe upon this servant of yours and make a voice out of me. I just know how to do beauty, makeup, and fashion. Breathe upon it, O oh God, and give me a voice to the nations. I will stand for you. Lord, I don't know how to preach. I only have a passion for the lost. And the Lord is saying, I will anoint you. What you have is enough. Come on, pray. Lord, this is what I have. Two loaves and five, five fish. Lord, can it feed 5,000 people? Yes, it can. Lift up your two loaves and five fish of talent. Lord, I am not eloquent. I cannot speak good English. I didn't go to a good school, but I desire to serve you. Yes, you can take you and make a wonder. He made a wonder out of his camera. Lord, my village is not in the map of Nigeria. Lord, I don't know my purpose in life, but I love you. Yes, he can use you. That's a good place to start. Lord, I don't know why I'm here on earth, but you can start from there. I don't know where you are taking me, oh God, but I'm willing. I'm available. I'm available. I will not disappoint you. I am available. Hallelujah. Run away. Listen to me. Run away from any company of friends that are visionless people and will not help you where you are going. I don't care how long you are with them. Even if they grew up in your yard, this is the time to tell them, look, I am going somewhere. Abraham got to a point where he told the servants, you cannot follow me from here. It's not that I hate you, but where I'm going requires that I carry my sacrifice alone. Many of you, that's the decision that will make God start using you. This one leg in here and then another leg there. Better take the other leg this night and get serious. Sit down, buy books, go to Jordan Bookstore. Jordan is there. Buy the books. You may have only Gary. Run away from that stupid faith message that teaches you that if you don't have anything now, your faith is not working. Sit down with your Gary and buy the books and, and 
and drink it honorably. The great drank a real like that too. There was a time we drank it and we drank it honorably. We ate bread and put granite inside and drank it with ten eras obo and we were praying in tongues. Don't think we didn't do it. Oh yes, we did it. The time we took ginger, I killed two birds with one stone because I used to sing there. So I used the ginger to that's all I could get and then I'll exercise my voice. Ten era bread and we put granite inside and eat it and say Lord you are faithful. Now you are getting only beans and you are saying for the past four days I've eaten beans and they've taught you that's not a sign of faith. Use your money to buy books. Buy the truth. Sell it not. Sit down. Don't buy suits. You don't need to look like Joshua Selman. It took me years to get here. Don't frustrate yourself. Some of the suit I'm having, people sold it into my life. Nobody will sow it into your life yet. So stop trying to say, I'm trying to look. Mm -mm. Go and sit down. Sit down with your one trouser. Wash it. Iron it. Carry your Bible. You can't afford a concordance, but you can afford 100 Naira Cafe. Other people are browsing in the day. Beg your friend for his internet, for his modem, and sit down and browse. You're signing a track record in the realm of the spirit. A lady don't sit down and say who will come and marry me go and find out how to be a mother how to be a wife how to be a minister go and ask people that are married buy juice and go and greet our, our, our mommy prophets here our mommy nankwa's mother is here buy juice and go and greet them pastor william's wife is here buy juice one day and go and greet and say mommy what will you advise me as a young lady I'll be going around and say who will come and marry me Hallelujah. And I say, guy, stop claiming the life of successful people. And sit down and start asking them what they did to get to where they are, they are getting to. All those I claim, I claim, I claim. You see, and you, yeah, I claim. You even draw it. You will draw it and sit down and see it there. I tell you, it will not come to pass. Hallelujah. You can buy Zobo. I know that we have not attained yet. But there is something we can tell you. Hallelujah. Make pepper soup and run and corner Jake's and say, Jake's, please, God is sending me to the nations. We went to massacre. We went for Panchin Crusade. We have gone for crusades. Jake single-handedly, as an undergraduate student, took over the church of God in, in, in Shika, the church of God in Giwa. We used to tease him and say, he has Giwa, Giwa church or Giwa assembly. He was the president of, uh, of gospel team. He has something to say. It's time for you to begin to respect the grace and the people around you. You can look at your roommate. Stop looking at your roommate as your roommate. Start looking at the anointing upon your roommate. You may be 10 years older than the person. Hallelujah. Very important. The person may even be your mother. One day come and kneel down before your mother, not as your mother, but as the servant of God. And say bless me let your hand touch my head open up a door of destiny we did it in lagos abi there was a time we met mommy oj that family is an enviable family all of us got down on our knees he said mommy we will not go we will not come back to lagos until something happens and that woman lay see let me tell you we are like bees we are a product of many blessings it's not everything we got on our secret place follow them who through faith and patience some of you who are very rude to elderly people you see whether it's your mother or your brother you see everybody just insults them because you now know how to use blackberry say honor your father and your mother so that your days may be long you don't honor them you will die young it's not a prophecy it's the word of god men of character and grace say after me i'm willing to sit down Say it, I'm willing to sit down and pay the price and God will honor me. One more time, say I'm willing to sit down and pay the price. Yes. Let's see more of you in Jordan Bookstore. Go and meet the media. Collect koinonia messages. God is sending you for ministry. You don't have the tape of anybody. Only the program that you preach. You just preach all kinds of disjointed scriptural thing that's the only tape you have you are learning go and buy get these things they are free sit with them sit with them 
say because they invited you and say, okay, go and preach in this one I have program. You suddenly carry one lady and say, come, you help me with my itinerary. Sit down, Jare. When I see people do all those things, I tell them, sit down. I don't care what you think you are prophesying. I'm not the kind of person you come to me and say, God said the moon has start. I tell you, sit down. Are you blessed tonight? Lord, we thank you. Give us grace to sit down. I assure you, brothers and sisters, you will bless God for these days of your life. You will bless God. Ask our mothers and our parents, and they will tell you as young people, we are setting a great foundation. Lord, we give you praise. Be glorified. We thank you for the privilege and the opportunity. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Quickly, if you are coming here for the first time, inside and outside, please appreciate them, celebrate them as they come out. This is your first time of worshipping with us at Koinonia. Please rise up on your feet, jump out quickly. Thank you very much. Thank you, appreciate them. Don't sit back, there is a blessing for you. Come out boldly, come out confidently. God bless you, thank you, inside and outside. Come on, keep clapping, motivate them. Let them know we love them and we appreciate them. Oh, the beauty makeup lady. Good to see you. Thank you, Sars. Thank you, Mars. Hallelujah. How many of you were blessed tonight? Hallelujah. God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. This is Koinonia. Hallelujah. Meeting put together by Eternity Network International. And our desire is that we come to know the Lord and dedicate ourselves totally to Him and that we partner with Him to be ambassadors upon the earth. And I know your life will never be the same. I know that God brought you for a reason and He brought you to change you and to bless you. We want to pray for you right now. And as we pray for you, I want you to receive the prayers that will change your life. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands, saints of God, as we prophesy in the lives of these ones. In the name of Jesus, we declare that you are blessed, you are challenged, you are encouraged. You will never be the same again. In the name of Jesus Christ, whatever challenge you came here with, we declare that it is lifted. In the name of Jesus, tonight God gives you an encounter with the Holy Spirit honor and value for the word of god honor and value for the ministry of prayer honor and value to be like jesus christ we speak and we prophesy upon your life in the name of jesus christ i pray hallelujah praise god thank you so much i'd like you to just have been blessed by this message. For additional information, call 081-38-325463 or 080-33-508735 or 0034-003936. You can visit us on Facebook on www.facebook.com slash Koinonia Eternity Network International or follow us on Twitter www.twitter.com slash Koinonia underscore ENI You can also download our messages on www.foreshared.com Eternity Network International duplicating the fullness of God's life on earth Scriptures exhort us from the book of Proverbs. 
He says, He's my son. Attend to my sins. Incline thy ears to my words. Let them not depart from thy eyes and keep them in the midst of thee. As you have listened to this message, we believe that you are going to reap the blessings thereof if you attend to these words as well. That you will keep these words in the midst of your heart. That no matter the circumstance, your eyes are going to be fixed on these words. And as you have been blessed, we will tell you to share this message. Be an evangelist by sharing to others to be blessed. And then subscribe to this channel for us because we have loads of videos. We have loads of content that is going to make you blessed. That is going to set you on course. That is going to set you ablaze. And don't forget to like for us. Thank you.